Illustrated everyday expressions with stories too. Lesson one. At a fancy restaurant. Target idioms. Be composed of. Our crumbs are composed of only the finest ingredients. The class was composed of students from the U.S., Canada, and England. Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. That's a very interesting sculpture. Yes, it's composed of wood, glass, and old shoes. Clean off. I think you need to clean off your windshield. You should clean off your desk. It's very dirty. He cleaned off the shelf so that his new roommate could use it. When is dinner? In a few minutes. Please help me clean off the table. Come across. I came across this in the backyard. Does anyone know what it is? I came across some old photographs at my parents' house. She came across her favorite singer's latest album at the record store. Please check my homework. Sure. If I come across any mistakes, I'll tell you. Dress up. Oh, that's just crazy, Willie. He likes to dress up. Many children dress up as ghosts and monsters on Halloween. Do I need to dress up for dinner at your parents' house? Why did you buy that suit? I want to dress up for the party. Fall asleep. Now is not the time to fall asleep. Don't fall asleep when you are driving. He falls asleep in class almost every day. You look really tired. I couldn't fall asleep last night. Fill out. Please fill out the form. Everyone has to fill out a customs form when they enter a country. Can you help me fill out this form? I don't understand it. I'd like to apply for a credit card. Okay, just fill out this form and sign it. In retrospect. In retrospect, maybe the haircut wasn't such a good idea. In retrospect, I should have studied harder in high school. You can see all of your past mistakes easily in retrospect. Wow, I am so full. Me too. In retrospect, we should have ordered only one pizza. On the whole, on the whole, I really enjoyed my trip to Canada. On the whole, I enjoyed my time in the United States. Although there were some slow parts, on the whole, the movie was good. What did you think of the test? On the whole, I felt it was quite easy. Set out. In the morning, he set out for the park across the street. He set out for the market early in the morning. She packed everything in her car and set out for California. Did Bob leave already? Yeah, he set out early this morning. Wait on. I hate waiting on pigs. The man who waited on us last night had a French accent. How many tables can you wait on at the same time? Excuse me, no one has waited on us yet. I am very sorry. I'll get a waiter right away. At a fancy restaurant. Will Arthur wait on us this evening? He's my favorite waiter here. I requested him, so he should be our waiter. Oh my! They didn't clean off this table very well. There is a sticky spot here. Don't touch it. I'll call someone over to clean it. Excuse me. Yes, sir. My wife came across a sticky spot on the table. Can you find someone to clean it up for us? Right away. The staff here is composed of such professionals. They are all so polite and efficient. Yes, on the whole, this is really a first-class restaurant. It is a little expensive, but worth it. 
Look at that man over there. He didn't dress up at all. He is not wearing a tie or a jacket. That's Mel Gibson. Idioms in context. I go to college in Boston, but my parents now live in Florida. During the summer vacation, I went to visit them. I set out from downtown Boston by bus on Tuesday afternoon. Thursday night, I got off the bus in Florida. I had a lot of trouble falling asleep on the bus, so I was exhausted by the time I arrived at my parents' house. In retrospect, I probably should have just taken a plane to Florida. After I was in Florida for a few days, I was well rested again. However, I soon got bored. My friends were all in Boston. I decided to get a job. I came across an advertisement for a job at a local restaurant. I filled out an application and got hired right away. On the first day of work, I got up early and got ready. I didn't have to dress up for work, but I did have to wear a uniform. The restaurant made everyone wear a formal white shirt and black shorts. The staff was composed of high school students and college students. At first, there were no customers, but around noon the restaurant got crowded. I waited on customers and helped clean off tables. On the whole, it was pretty easy work. It wasn't too busy, but it wasn't too slow either. As the lunch crowd started to leave, I stopped at a table where an old man and old woman were sitting. As I was picking up their empty plates, the old man asked me, "Are you from the north?" I said, "Yes, sir." I'm from Boston. I guess you could tell right away I was from the North because of the way I speak. Oh no! The old woman said, "We have never seen legs as wide as yours before." Lesson two, at a coffee shop. Target idioms. Be crazy about. He's always been crazy about tomatoes. She is crazy about tennis. She plays every day. My brother is crazy about movies. He spends all of his money going to see them. I love buying new clothes. Me too. I'm crazy about shopping. Call it a day. I think you should call it a day. Let's call it a day. Bill, you've been here for ten hours. You should call it a day and go home. It's seven thirty. Let's call it a day. Good idea. See you tomorrow. Concentrate on. Concentrate on the road. It's too noisy here. I can't concentrate on my homework. He had to concentrate on the song to hear the words. Just concentrate on hitting the ball. Okay, coach. Get along with. I think it's time we tried to get along with each other. Everyone in my family gets along well with each other. She does not get along with her mother-in-law. Why aren't you going to Beth's party? I don't get along with her. Have a point. It's spicy. You may have a point. I'll use less pepper next time. My sister says that I need to spend more time with my family. She has a point. That girl only seems stuck up because she is shy. You have a point there. The blue shirt looks better, but it's more expensive. You have a point. More often than not. More often than not, I have seafood for dinner. More often than not, he spends his holidays with his parents. She works late more often than not. We'd better take an umbrella. Right. It rains more often than not this time of year. Never mind. Never mind your hair. You're in the army now. Never mind that car's color. It runs great. Didn't you wash the dishes yet? Never mind. 
I'll do them myself. Sorry, we don't have leather bags. Never mind. I'll look in another store. Take a look at. Take a look at that. The doctor took a look at her foot to see if it was broken. Please take a look at my essay and let me know what you think of it. Something's wrong with the car. I'll take a look at it after lunch. Turn out. It turned out to be a sunny day. The weather looked bad this morning, but it turned out to be a nice day. He tried to cook a special dinner for his girlfriend, but it didn't turn out well. Good luck with your new project. Thanks. I'll let you know how it turns out. Wrap up. I want to wrap up the team tryouts by comparing your heights. Stand together. The senator wrapped up his speech by quoting the president. The party wrapped up around 3 a.m. after the beer ran out. It's almost lunchtime. Okay, let's wrap up and go out to eat. At a coffee shop. How did your date last night turn out? It was okay. We got along with each other, but I didn't feel any attraction for him. What do you mean? He was a nice guy, but not my type. I am not crazy about a man who spends his whole day with a computer. I prefer someone who is more of a people person. Computer programmers make a lot of money, Carol. You have a point, Alice. Actually, he does work for a very large company. Is he handsome? We took a picture together at one of those funny photo booths. Here, take a look at him for yourself. That's him. Oh, never mind, Carol. You can do better than that. Idioms in context. I usually get along with everyone at my office. Recently, however, the woman who sits across from me bought a new cell phone. She was crazy about it. More often than not, she was chatting with her friends. It was very difficult to concentrate on work. One afternoon, we all decided to call it a day and go out for dinner. However, we made the woman promise not to bring her cell phone into the restaurant. Do you think you'll survive without it? I joked to her. No problem, she said. The evening was fun, but it was getting late. So we wrapped up dinner and left the restaurant. I was the last to leave, and just as I was getting into my car, a waiter came running up to me. I found this purse at your table, he said. I took a look at it. That's my coworker's purse, I said. Why don't you call and leave a message on her answering machine? The waiter suggested. You can use the phone in the restaurant. We went inside. I was about to dial her home number when I had an idea. Never mind leaving a message on her machine. I'll call her cellular phone. That way she can drive back before she gets all the way home. You have a good point, the waiter said. When I called her cellular phone, a ringing noise came from her purse. It turned out that her phone was in her purse the whole time. Lesson three. On the highway. Target idioms. Bring up. I hate to bring it up, but some of the others said that there is something strange about you. I hate to bring this up, but you have some food between your teeth. When my mother is mad at me, she always brings up the time I forgot her birthday. I really don't like the new coffee machine. You should bring it up at the next staff meeting. By all means. May I have another piece? By all means. May I have some more chicken? By all means. By all means, take your time and look around the store. Could I borrow your pen? By all means. 
by chance. They met by chance at the supermarket. By chance, the first birthday card she read was from her brother. They met by chance while they were both vacationing in Hawaii. Where did you get your cat? I found him by chance in the park. Carry on. Okay, now there's nothing to see here. Please carry on with your day. After the storm passed, we carried on painting the house. When the announcement was finished, the class carried on with the lesson. Is everyone back from lunch? Yes, let's carry on with the meeting. Draw the line at. Son, isn't there somewhere we should draw the line? My parents let me use the car, but they draw the line at allowing me to take long trips. I don't mind sharing a room, but I draw the line at sleeping in the same bed. Let's go to a nightclub. Okay, but I draw the line at doing disco. Fix up. It's a good car, but you may need to fix it up a bit. They fixed up the office by putting in new carpet and painting the walls. It would cost more to fix up this old boat than to buy a new one. Is John going to buy a new house? No, he's going to fix up his old one. Get lost. They got lost in the snowstorm. We got lost on the way to the theater. The directions were not clear, so we got lost. Why are you late? I got lost on the way. High time. It's high time we got out of here. I think it's high time we fix the heater. I'm freezing. My mother said it was high time that I got my hair cut and found a job. It's high time you cleaned your room. Yes, Mom. I'll do it right away. Lose one's temper. Don't make me lose my temper. He lost his temper and hit the table with his fist. It is dangerous to lose your temper while driving. What happened to your hand? I lost my temper and punched the wall. Pull over. Could you pull over? I need to use a washroom. She pulled over to take a picture of the beautiful scenery by the highway. The police officer yelled at the driver, "Pull over!" I think we're lost. Let's pull over and look at the map again. On the highway. Yes, officer. I asked you to pull over because your brake light is broken. May I see your license and car registration? By all means. Here they are. Well. I think it's high time you had that fixed. It's not safe to drive around with a broken brake light. Yes, sir. I won't give you a ticket this time. Get that light fixed. I will, officer. Um, I wonder if you could help. I met my friend by chance at the post office this morning, and we plan to meet at La Chaise for lunch. I thought it was on Lexington Street, but I took a wrong turn and got lost. At the next stoplight, turn left. Lexington will be the third street on the right. Thank you, officer. Carry on the good work you are doing. Idioms in context. Everybody knows that men hate to stop and ask for directions. My husband is no different. Every time we get lost, we drive around for hours before he finally pulls over and asks for help. One Saturday, we saw an ad in the newspaper for a country dance and picnic at a farm outside of town. We fixed up our old cowboy hats, cut out the map from the newspaper, and started driving. After a few hours, I brought up the fact that we were lost. Of course, my husband lost his temper when I suggested we ask someone for directions. I can find it. He yelled. I didn't see any point in fighting about it, so I just told him, "By all means, carry on." 
After another hour of driving, I decided it was high time to ask for help. By chance, we passed a little gas station with an old man sitting out by the pumps. My husband agreed to stop because we needed gas, but he drew the line at asking for directions. I got out of the car and walked over to the old man. Before I asked him anything, he smiled and said, "That map is wrong. It's Highway 23, not 32." How did you know? I asked in surprise. You're the fifth woman whose husband has gotten lost in the last hour. Lesson four, in the hospital. Target idioms. A steal. Wow, what a steal! My friend sold me his old car. It was a steal. The land next to the river is a steal. You should buy it. I just bought a DVD player for ninety-five dollars. Wow, what a steal! At hand. The game is at hand. Now get in there and do your best. Christmas is at hand. I have to buy gifts for my family. When I was a child, my mother was always close at hand. I fear that war is at hand. Don't worry. I'm sure the countries will reach an agreement. Get better. Don't worry. You'll get better. His cold got better after he took a day off work. Her singing will get better if she practices every day. This movie is boring. Don't worry, it gets better. More or less, the male and female fish look more or less the same. My cousin and I are more or less the same age. The airline tickets were more or less the same price. Which shirt is better? They are more or less the same quality. On hand. Do you have any water on hand? Do you have any bandages on hand? I cut myself. There is a representative on hand twenty-four hours a day to help customers. There's going to be five extra people at the party. No problem. We have plenty of food on hand. On one's own. Little Jimmy was proud of his sculpture of a giraffe, which he'd made on his own. She has lived on her own since she was twenty-two. He cooked this whole meal on his own without any help from his mother. Do you need help fixing the sink? No thanks. I can do it on my own. Refer to A as B. Stop referring to me as your man. I am not your man. He referred to his classmate as his friend, even though they had only studied together. Many people referred to this book as the author's greatest work. What did your teacher say about your paper? He referred to it as the work of a genius. Take one's time. Okay, Billy. Now take your time and decide. She took her time and made sure she did not make any mistakes on the test. He is taking his time getting ready. He wants to look nice. I'll be there as soon as I can. Take your time. The movie doesn't start until three o'clock. Think highly of. You don't think highly of me, do you? Her teacher thought highly of her ability to draw. He doesn't think very highly of his neighbors. Mr. Henry is such a great teacher. Yes. All the students think highly of him. Try out. We're ready to try it out. Don't buy the bike until you try it out first. I tried out several software programs, but none of them were good. Your skateboard looks really fun. It is. Why don't you try it out? In the hospital, how are you feeling, Mark? I think I'm getting better. At least I can move my fingers today. Great! Everyone thinks highly of the doctor who is treating you. 
They say he is the best. Yeah, he is good. I heard the nurse refer to him as Doctor Miracle. Well, everyone at work is hoping you can come back soon, but take your time. Do you know how long you will be in the hospital? Actually, I'm going home tomorrow, and since my wife has to work, I'll be on my own there all day. Will you be okay? I think so. I can manage things with my left hand, more or less. If you need anything, just call. I'll be close at hand. I'll come over and give you a hand. Just hand over all your problems to me. I can handle them. I'll be on hand. Okay, okay, I get it. Very funny. Thanks, Bob. Idioms in context. My Brazilian friend has only lived in the United States for six months, but his English is great. Before he came to the U.S., he studied in a language school, but mostly he learned English on his own from reading English books and watching movies. He had learned basic conversation before he arrived in the U.S. Then, after he got here, his vocabulary and listening got better very quickly. I would say that he is now more or less fluent in English. However, sometimes he still has trouble with idioms. One day, he asked me to help him buy some jewelry for his girlfriend back in Brazil. Her birthday was close at hand, and he wanted to get something nice. He showed me a picture of his girlfriend before we went shopping. When I saw the picture, I said, "Wow, your girlfriend is a real spring chicken." My friend asked me. Why do you refer to my girlfriend as a chicken? I explained to my friend, "I just mean your girlfriend is very young and beautiful." In the jewelry store, they had several very nice necklaces on hand. I suggested that we take our time and look at several stores, but my friend found a diamond necklace that was a steal. He called the saleswoman over to buy it. As the saleswoman was taking out the necklace, my friend decided to try out the new idiom he had learned. He showed the saleswoman the picture of his girlfriend and asked, "Don't you think she is a chicken noodle?" My friend's English may not be perfect, but I still think highly of it. Lesson five. At the office. Target idioms. As of yet. As of yet, she's never had a boyfriend. As of yet, he has not been paid by the company. The date for the final test has not been announced as of yet. Are the new computers in? I'm sorry, sir. They have not arrived as of yet. At one's fingertips. He has the information at his fingertips. I don't have that information at my fingertips right now. Can you wait a minute? Keep all of your important papers at your fingertips at all times. Wow, your Palm Pilot is really great. Yeah, it keeps important information right at my fingertips. Brand new. It's my brand new refrigerator. Their brand new car was stolen yesterday. I bought a brand new stereo to go with my television and DVD player. Your shoes look very clean. Actually, they're brand new. Cut in. I hate when people cut in line. I hate it when people cut in line at the movies. She was telling a joke, but her brother cut in and told the rest of it. That man just cut in front of us. How rude! Dwell on. I know you got a bad grade, but try not to dwell on it. She could not help dwelling on the fact that her mother was sick. I know you lost your wallet, but try not to dwell on it. I can't stop thinking about my old girlfriend. Don't dwell on her. I'm sure you will find love again. Get a hold of. Hello, Jimmy. You'll never believe who I got a hold of. 
he couldn't get hold of his friend to tell him the plans were changed. Please write down a phone number where we can get a hold of you. Did you get a hold of Mike? No, his line was busy. Learn something by heart. Learn by heart. He's my favorite. I've learned all his songs by heart. She can't read music, so she learns all the songs by heart. I had to learn the whole book by heart in elementary school. How did you remember all those math equations? I learned them by heart. Mix up. I often mix up my friends' phone numbers. I mixed up your names. Could you say that again? The office mixed up the addresses and sent the wrong forms to the two customers. You are supposed to come tomorrow, not today. Sorry, I mixed up the dates. Take by surprise. The phone call took him by surprise. His friend's visit took him by surprise. When he asked her to marry him, he took her completely by surprise. I can't believe that your mother joined the army. Yes, she took us all by surprise. Take time off. She took time off to enjoy a vacation in the sun. I have to take time off next week to go to the doctor. Our company is very strict about taking time off. Why don't we go to Paris next weekend? I'm not sure if I can take time off work. At the office. Carol, has Bob come into work yet? Not as of yet. Would you like me to call him? Yes, please. Do you know his phone number? Yes, I keep all of the sales representatives' contact numbers at my fingertips here on my desk. There are just too many to learn by heart. See if he is at home. I think we mixed up the vacation schedule. Both Bob and Sam asked to take time off the same week. Sam was given the vacation, but Bob wasn't. But I don't know if Bob was told the right information. I'll call him as soon as I get a chance. Thanks, Carol. Let me know if you get a hold of him. Idioms in context. My boyfriend took time off from work one Friday to move to a new apartment. It was a lot of hard work. When I got home later that evening, I was exhausted. I wanted to give my boyfriend a call and cancel our plans for the next day. My boyfriend also got a brand new phone number for his new apartment, but as of yet, I had not learned it by heart. I usually keep all the phone numbers I need at my fingertips in my day planner. Unfortunately, I had not written his number down. The only way I could think of to get a hold of my boyfriend was to call the operator and ask for Mike Williams' phone number. I called the number that the operator gave me, but I was taken by surprise when a woman answered the phone. Hello, she said. I asked, Can I speak to Mike? The woman said, He is taking a shower right now. I was shocked. At first, I didn't say anything. Is there anything that. She started to ask, but I cut in. Tell him to call his girlfriend when he gets out of the shower. I hung up the phone quickly without waiting for the woman's answer. I was a bit upset. However, I tried not to dwell on the fact that a woman was in my boyfriend's apartment while he was in the shower. I knew Mike made friends with the neighbors when he moved in, so I assumed the woman was his neighbor. She was probably just helping him clean the place up. An hour passed, and Mike had not called me back. I called again, and a man answered the phone. Hello? he said. The voice was strange. All of a sudden, I realized that it was the wrong number. The operator had mixed up my boyfriend's number with another man named Mike Williams. I said, You're not Mike. The man said, And you're not my girlfriend. I've been trying to explain that to my wife for over an hour.
Lesson six. At the dinner table. Target idioms. As a rule, you should wash your white clothes and colored clothes separately. As a rule, you should eat less meat and more vegetables. As a rule. As a rule, the teacher does not like it when students leave early. Do you think I can eat this banana? Well, as a rule, eating is not allowed on the subway. Be at a loss. I'm at a loss for words. She was at a loss about what to do with the elephant in the backyard. I know the man you are talking about, but I'm at a loss to think of his name. I am at a loss as to what to cook for dinner. Let's order pizza. Come up with. We have to come up with a plan. When did you come up with that idea? He came up with a plan to solve the problem. You named your dog Tweety. It's the best I could come up with. For short, this is my friend Coronotino Calanatangas. His friends call him Casey for short. My name is Alexander, but you can call me Alex for short. I work for Seattle Auto Company, or SAC for short. What kind of car is that? It's a sport utility vehicle, SUV for short. In spite of, in spite of the rain, they went to the beach. In spite of the bad weather, we will go hiking. The company kept hiring new employees in spite of its decreasing sales. How was your trip to Mexico? We had a great time in spite of the hurricane. Look to A for B. She usually looks to her parents for support. You should look to your parents for help if you don't have enough money. He looked to his best friend for advice when he needed a job. Don't worry about the test. We can study together. It's nice to know that I can look to you for help. Thanks. Neither A nor B, neither I nor my brother is as tall as our father. Neither I nor my sister is as beautiful as my mother. She looked for her professor, but he was neither in his office nor in the classroom. Neither Jim nor Amy are going to the movie. I guess it's just the two of us then. Point out. Excuse me, could you point out a barber shop? The waiter pointed out the chef's special on the menu. He pointed out the places he had visited on the map. Wow, that girl is really ugly. I should point out that she's my sister. Run into. I had a feeling I'd run into you. I often run into people I know at the bus stop. While I was in Hollywood, I ran into a famous actor in the supermarket. What took you so long at the store? I ran into my old elementary school teacher. When it comes to, he doesn't know very much when it comes to mathematics. When it comes to explaining difficult subjects, she is the best teacher. He doesn't know very much when it comes to cars. Can you help me install this computer program? Sorry, when it comes to computers, I am a real dunce. At the dinner table. Guess who I ran into today? Who? Robert Smith. Who? Robert Smith, the boy who used to cut our lawn. I am at a loss. What does he look like? Remember, he had blonde hair and glasses. He was really short. Nope. I'm not coming up with any kid like that in my memory. Anyway, he's starting college. Now he has neither blonde hair nor glasses. He has dark hair and he's much taller. But in spite of the fact that he is grown up, he still chews bubble gum. Now I remember him. We used to call him Bob for short. Right, Bubble Gum Bob.
Idioms in context. My husband and I went to a high school reunion party in our old town. Almost one hundred people were there. As a rule, I enjoy meeting people, but when it comes to large, noisy parties, I get very tired. I told my husband that I would prefer not to stay for too long. My husband pointed out that we should at least say hello to the people that we knew. We did run into several old friends at the party, so in spite of the crowd, I still had a good time. During the party, a young man came up to us. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brown," he said to us. He looked familiar, but I didn't know where I had seen the young man before. I knew it was no use looking to my husband for help. He is terrible at coming up with names to match with faces. This time, we were both at a loss to think of his name. We talked with the young man for a while, and then a couple came up to us. It was Don and Liz Wilson. Her name is Elizabeth, but everyone calls her Liz for short. They were friends of ours. We had kept in touch, but had not seen them for many years. The young man left after a few minutes to talk with some of his other friends. I told the Wilsons, "I'm sorry we did not introduce you to that nice young man. Neither my husband nor I could figure out his name." That's all right," said Mr. Wilson. "He is our son." Lesson Seven. In the car. Target idioms. Add two. Eating lots of chocolate will only add to your acne problem. The flooding only added to the problems caused by the storm. The new research will add to our understanding of genetics. Mom, why are you giving me your dirty socks? I want to add to your collection. Day after day, day after day, he waited for her to call back. Day after day, she waited for a letter, but none came. He walked past the house day after day without really noticing it. How can that old man just sit in the park day after day? That's a statue. Go through. She went through a stressful time last year. He went through some medical tests last week. When we travel, we always go through the same argument about where to stay. Let's go on the roller coaster one more time. No thanks. I don't want to go through that again. Have to. Ugh, I have to eat. We have to buy more bread. I have to finish this paper by Monday. Can you go to the movies with me? Sorry, I have to babysit tonight. Hit upon, he hit upon a great idea for a birthday gift. I hit upon a great idea for Amy's party while I was walking to school today. How old was Einstein when he hit upon the idea of relativity? This banana pizza is delicious. Thanks. I hit upon the idea while at the zoo yesterday. In short, he's cute, funny, rich, and single. In short, he's perfect. In short, I believe everyone should vote against the new tax. In short, I don't want to work here any more. What did you think of the movie? Well, in short, it was the worst movie I've seen this year. Of one's own accord, he washed the dishes of his own accord. My brother decided to clean the house of his own accord. Her parents were going to tell her to get a job, but she got one of her own accord. Did you put the cat outside? No, he opened the door and went out of his own accord. Once and for all, he decided to take care of his nose hair problem once and for all. I am going to get rid of those cockroaches once and for all. He decided to stop smoking once and for all. Where are you going with that hammer? I am going to make that car alarm stop once and for all. Give rise to. 
Your new hairstyle might give rise to some problems. The meeting gave rise to some new plans for the future of the company. The heavy rain gave rise to an increase in the number of mosquitoes. I don't think we should leave the dog and the cat alone together. You're right. It could give rise to problems. Resign oneself to. He resigned himself to working at the amusement park because he needed the money. She resigned herself to working in her father's company. You don't have to resign yourself to the same kind of life your parents had. Aren't you upset about your test score? No, I just resigned myself to being a poor student. In the car, Mom, Jimmy is touching me. Enough! I'm sick of asking you to stop. Can't you children behave of your own accord? I didn't do anything. She's bothering me. Day after day, it's the same thing. He's touching me. She's bothering me. Are you going to stop this arguing, or do I have to stop the car? He started it, Mom. I did not. I want you to stop this nonsense once and for all. Nancy, better stop it before she makes me really mad. You can't make me. That's it. The two of you better resign yourselves to a quiet night at home. You're both grounded. No television. No toys. No friends. Nothing. And no more talking, or I will add to your punishment. Idioms in context. My son is going through adolescence. With all that is going on in his life, he has a hard time remembering simple instructions. This gives rise to some problems. For example, Wednesday is the day to wash clothes at our house. My son used to always leave money in his pockets. He never checked his clothes of his own accord. Day after day, I reminded him to do it, but he always forgot. I resigned myself to the fact that I'd have to keep checking his pockets for him. Then I hit upon an idea to put a stop to my son's bad habit once and for all. I told my son, "I am going to put any money that I find in your pockets in a jar. When I have collected enough money, you have to use it to take me out to dinner and a movie." In short, I wanted to teach my son a lesson in a positive way. On the next Wednesday, I looked into my son's room. He didn't see me. I watched him sit down on his bed and check all of his pockets for money. He took a few coins out of his pants. I was so happy. However, to my surprise, my son put the coins back into the pocket, then stood up and got his wallet out of his bag. He took out a dollar bill and added it to the coins in the pocket on purpose. I never thought he wanted to take his mother to dinner and a movie. I was flattered. Lesson eight, at the office. Target idioms. At times, at times I feel different. At times I wish I had studied something other than medicine. At times he can be very cruel. How do you like working in the circus? It's okay, but at times I feel a little bored. Be likely to. It's likely to rain this afternoon. It is likely to snow this afternoon. Drive carefully. Someone is likely to ask for your business card. Do you have any? Let's order some pizza. It's not likely to be open this early in the morning. Be opposed to. I've always been opposed to eating beef. My mother was always opposed to my father's smoking. 
I'm not opposed to his joining us for the weekend. Why does Bill only shower once a week? He is opposed to wasting water. By accident. It happened by accident. By accident, he hit the wrong button on the keyboard and lost his file. She walked into the bathroom by accident while he was in there. What happened to my car? I scratched it by accident. Sorry. Come from. Where did it come from? Where did your ancestors come from? These bananas come from Brazil. Where did all these books come from? The library was selling its old books. Feel for. I feel for those guys. She felt for the people starving in Africa, so she sent money to the charity. I really feel for homeless people. Poor Tom, his pet iguana died. Yeah, I really feel for him. For the sake of, he works hard for the sake of his family. For the sake of time, we won't discuss the new budget at this meeting. He had to quit smoking for the sake of his health. Please don't try to cook any more. Okay, I will stop for the sake of our relationship. Get away with. You'll never get away with this. He thought he could get away with hiding a card in his sleeve, but he got caught. She pretended she was a student to get the discount, and she got away with it. Did you hear that Sarah cheated on the test and got an A? I can't believe she got away with it. Stand a chance. He doesn't stand a chance. The players on the other team are all over six feet tall. We don't stand a chance. I really want to ask her on a date. Do you think I stand a chance? I can build the house by myself. Ha! You don't stand a chance without me. Without question. Without question, that was the best meal I've had all this year. Without question. That's the best movie I have ever seen. The test was, without question, the most difficult test of the year. What do you think of my painting? You are, without question, the most talented painter I know. At the office. Come in, Bob. I wanted to talk to you about this memo regarding staff meetings. Sure. Is there a problem? Maybe. But first, do you know where this memo came from? It says the staff, but I think one person may have written it. I don't know who wrote it, but almost no one is opposed to the suggestion of only having one meeting every two weeks. I think it's a good idea too, but if the idea is going to stand a chance of being accepted by management, we need to add one thing to the proposal. What is that? At times, it might be necessary to have an emergency meeting. Do you think the staff is likely to accept the suggestion that we have meetings every two weeks with possible emergency meetings once in a while? Without question, that should be okay with everyone. Idioms in context. I often play golf with my father. Since I play golf on a college team, my father doesn't stand a chance of beating me. He is, without question, one of the worst golfers I have ever played with. In fact, I think even a beginner could beat him. At times, my father will cheat at golf. He'll kick the ball to put it in a better position. I'm not opposed to his occasional tricks. Even when I see him cheat. I still let him get away with it for the sake of the game. It helps keep the game interesting for both of us. My father often hits the ball in the wrong direction. I remember one time my father hit a duck with his ball by accident. I really felt for the duck. My father's ball hit it right on the head. It quacked angrily and flew away. Don't worry, Dad. I said, the duck is likely to make a full recovery. My father asked, 
Where did that duck come from? It shouldn't be on the golf course. The duck wasn't on the golf course, Dad, I pointed out to my father. Lesson 9 At the Apartment Target Idioms As usual As usual, he was talking about himself. He is going to be late as usual. As usual, I brushed my teeth right after I ate dinner. Where is Matt? He's playing computer games as usual. Back up Back up! My father had to back up because the car in front of him broke down. Could you please back up? You are standing too close. I would like to get the trees in the photo, too. Okay, I'll just back up a little. Be cut out for. I don't think he's cut out for swimming. I don't know if I'm cut out for graduate school. Nobody thought she was cut out for the army, but she became an officer. I didn't know that Dave is afraid of flying. Yeah, I don't think he's cut out to be a pilot. Catch on. Don't worry, you'll catch on soon. It took him a few minutes to catch on to the joke. Don't worry, just follow me and you'll catch on in no time. Wow, you learned how to juggle in one day? Yes, I caught on to it quickly. Four ages. He hasn't cut his beard for ages. We haven't visited our grandparents for ages. That act hasn't made a, mo a movie for ages. How is your cat? I don't know. I haven't seen it for ages. Hand over. Hand over the food. This is a robbery. Hand over all of your money. The old man decided to hand over his business to his sons. All right, hand over my keys. I don't have them. Sir and right. It serves you right. It would serve him right if she never spoke to him again. Her talk show was canceled. It serves her right for being so rude to her guests. Billy had to do extra homework because he came late to class. Serves him right. Take apart. He had to take apart the robot. I took apart the fan and put in a new motor. He takes apart cars and sells the engines. Why did you take apart the computer? I was looking for a file. Turn down. She always turned him down. She asked him to go out with her, but he turned her down. I invited her to join us, but she turned down my invitation. I tried to join the band, but they turned me down. Maybe you should learn how to sing first? Work out. He decided it was finally time to start working out. How often do you work out each week? I don't really like to work out, but I do like to play tennis and basketball. Do you work out? Yes. I run to the donut shop every morning. At the apartment. Hey, Sam. Did you borrow my yellow tea? Oh, yeah. Got it. Hand it over. I've got a date tonight. Real. Whom? Carol Morgan. You're going out with Carol? I haven't seen her for ages. How is she? She's great. She has been working out and looks better than ever. Wow. She looked incredible before. How did you get her to go out with you? I asked her. Okay, I had to ask her a few times. She took down at first, but I asking. As you, your annoying nations in the end. I think you're starting to con. Whisper. If at first you don't see, try again. Idioms in context. Amy went to shopping with her. As usual, her husband would you be watching television to go. Amy tried to persuade her husband. 
She told him, Come with me, honey. We have been shooting together for ages. I want you to take get summer dresses with me. You can help me pick out the one. Her husband turned down, saying, Always a cherry store, Amy. I'm not cut out all that wall around. Think as can work out, he suggested. You'll be in your exercise for the day. Her husband was listening. He was concentrating on a football game on television. Amy was so upset that she wanted to take apart the TV and flush each piece down the toilet. She set out for the shopping mall alone, but as she was backing up the car in the driveway, she had an idea. She stopped the car and went back in the house. She told her husband, I'm sorry for bothering you, honey. Have fun watching the game. Then she gave him a kiss and left. At the mall, she found hundreds of dresses for sale and took her time looking through them all. She picked out two nice ones and went to pay for them. As she was handing over her credit card to the cashier, the remote control for her television fell out of, out of her purse. My husband is home watching television, Amy explained to the confused cashier. When he catches on that I stole the remote control, he'll go crazy. But it serves him right for not coming with me. Lesson 10 At the Gym Target Idioms Abide by You have to abide by my rules if you want to live in my house. You have to abide by the rules or, or they will make you leave. He refused to abide by the, wish, the wishes of his parents. Why didn't you abide by the speed limit? I'm, I'm sorry, officer. I was late for my driving class. Apart from Apart from the food, he really enjoyed his trip. Apart from the size of the bedroom, I really liked the apartment. She enjoyed her visit to England, apart from the weather. What do you think of my car? Apart from the pink paint, I think it's great. As if. He looked as if he was angry. He acted as if nothing was wrong. Dream as if you live forever. Live as if you'll die today. You look as if you are nervous. I am. This is my first time bungee jumping. Go for. Go for it. If you don't try, you will never know if you can do it. Go for it. Their mother went for a university degree at the age of 52. Why is Tom trying to eat 30 donuts? He's going for a world record. Go without saying. It goes without saying that there will be beer at the party. Will it snow this winter? That goes without saying. It goes without saying that you have to attend class to get a good grade. You should wear a seat belt when you drive. That goes without saying. Keep one's fingers crossed. The operation is almost complete. He looks like he's going to be fine. I'll keep my fingers crossed. We kept our fingers crossed as they announced the results of the contest. Good luck. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Are you going to ask her for a date tomorrow? Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed. Make sure. Make sure you blow out the candles before you go to bed. He made sure to lock the door when he left. Who makes sure that these computers are turned off at night? I am going to Hawaii this summer. Make sure you take lots of sunscreen. Run over. You've got to be careful when you cross the road. You don't want to get run over. I ran over a snake in the road this morning. A bicyclist ran over her toe. What happened to my flowers? That boy ran over them on his bike. Take up. The sofa takes up a lot of space in the living room. Painting a house takes up a lot of time. That old sofa takes up a lot of space. Let's get rid of it. I'm sorry to take up so much of your time, doctor. No problem. I'm glad you are feeling better. Tend to. 
Dogs tend to be friendly and loyal to their owners. His boss tends to worry about every little thing. Traffic tends to get heavy around five in the evening. I'm going to take a jacket to the movies. Good idea. It tends to be cold in the theater. At the gym. Hi, Carol. I didn't know you started working out here. I just started a few days ago. Do you have a trainer? Lots of beginners tend to work out too much their first few days, and they end up quitting because too difficult. No, I don't have a trainer. I just decided I wanted to lose some weight and join the gym. Well, make sure you don't do too much until you've gotten used to it. Apart from lifting some weights, the only other exercise I do is swimming. You don't think that's too much, do you? No, that sounds good. It's great that you found a good program and decided to go for it. It goes without saying that I am proud of you. Thanks, Alice. Well, I should go. I don't want to take up too much time talking when I should be exercising. Idioms in context. When our son turned sixteen, he decided it was high time he got a driver's license. Once our son makes up his mind to do something, he goes for it. My wife and I had to go with him to practice his driving almost every night for two weeks. It took up a lot of our time. Overall, he was a pretty good driver. He did his best to abide by the traffic rules. Apart from the time he ran over the garbage can when he was backing up. I thought he did very well. My wife, on the other hand, was always nervous when our son got behind the steering wheel. It goes without saying that my wife tended to react more strongly when our son made a mistake. She always came back pale and exhausted after a trip in the car with our son. Finally, the day came for our son's driving test. I told him before the test, "Make sure you watch your speed, son. You tend to go around corners too fast." Well, good luck. I'll keep my fingers crossed. In just a few hours, my son came back with his driver's license. I asked him how his driving test went. He said the man giving the test was very nice. The man even asked if he could do anything to make my son more relaxed during the test. My son told him, "When I come to a traffic light, you can scream as if you're going to die." Lesson eleven. On the street. Target idioms. Blow up. I ate so much. I feel like I'm going to blow up. The bomb blew up, but no one was hurt. Don't put that can near the fire, or it might blow up. How did the fire start? The old gas heater blew up. Bring back. The song brought back some old memories. He brought back the video that he had borrowed from me. The picture brought back memories of her childhood. Can I borrow your car? Sure, but bring it back before five o'clock, please. Burn down. If you play with matches, you could burn down the house. The school burned down in 1910. Help! The church is burning down. What happened to all the trees? They burned down in the forest fire last year. Catch fire! The log caught fire immediately. The wood was wet, so it didn't catch fire very easily. His clothes caught fire because he stood too close to the stove. Let's move the candles away from the window. You're right. The curtains might catch fire. Come to. How did things come to this? When you come to the end of this part of the test, stop. If you come to a word you don't know, use a dictionary. Excuse me. How can I get to Tom's Market? 
Go straight. When you come to the intersection, turn right. For the most part, for the most part, I really enjoyed my trip. For the most part, I enjoyed the time I spent in the country. For the most part, she was satisfied with her performance. How is your new job? It's very interesting for the most part. Make one's way. They made their way across the country. He made his way to the front of the line. They made their way from California to Texas along Route 66. I can't get a good look at the band. Let's make our way to the front. No matter. No matter how much I comb my hair, it always looks messy. I can't get an A in the class no matter how well I do on the final exam. You don't have any money? No matter. You can pay me next time. No matter what I try, I can't start my computer. Is it plugged in? Sort of. Oh, the juice tastes sort of strange. This restaurant is sort of expensive. Do you want to go somewhere else? I'm sort of tired. Can I meet you some other time? Have you ever had shark? Yes, it tastes sort of like chicken. Tear down. They want to tear down the old apartments to build new ones. I heard they are going to tear down the old stadium. The workers had to tear down everything and start again. I'm glad they tore down the wall. Me too. The view is much better. On the street. Wow! That was a huge fire last night. It's hard to believe that there used to be a four-story office building right there. The whole thing burned down to the ground. Does anyone know how it caught fire? I heard someone say something about an electrical fire. Maybe it was bad wiring. It's sort of scary to think that could happen in our building as well. For the most part, I feel pretty safe in our building. It's much newer than the building that burned down. I guess they're going to tear down the burned parts of the building that are still standing and build a new office building there. I'm sure they will. Probably if we come to this spot in a few months, we won't even recognize the place. Idioms in Context Last summer I visited my hometown. I had not been there for 10 years. I kept in touch with my parents while I was away. But no matter how much they tried to tell me about the changes in our town, I was still surprised at what I saw. As I made my way through the streets around my parents' house, many of the places I saw brought back memories of my childhood. First, I saw my elementary school playground. Then I saw my best friend's old house. Some of my favorite places were gone. For example, the old movie theater had burned down years ago. It caught fire when the heater in the basement blew up. The old store where I used to buy candy was torn down. Now a four-story office building stands in its place. As I came to the corner by the old bank, I ran into Mr. Collins. My parents were friends with the Collins when I was young. I went up to Mr. Collins and said hello. He looked sort of confused. I told him, I'm John and Helen's daughter. Mr. Collins said, Oh, you're Helen's daughter. Such a beautiful lady. Then Mr. Collins called his wife over. Lucy, come here. It's Helen's daughter. You remember Helen. Such a beautiful lady. Mrs. Collins came over. She looked at me and said, Oh, yes, Helen was so pretty. Then she said, For the most part, you take after your father. Lesson 12. In the Yard Target Idioms Be free to. 
At my school, students are free to use computers after class. She was free to choose any dish on the menu. You are free to leave as soon as you finish the test. Where would you like me to sit? You're free to sit where you like. Become of. Don't give up your dreams. Just look at what became of Mickey. Do you know what became of that singer? I haven't heard about him for ages. Many people wonder what's become of our sense of decency. What will become of that old car? I think they will sell it to a museum. Die of. We are all going to die of something. I almost died of embarrassment when my swimming suit came off. The trees died of poison in the soil from the nearby factory. My parrot died of old age. I'm sorry to hear that. Furnish A with B. The hotel furnished us with free drinks all week. The school furnished the students with new desks. The speaker furnished everyone at the presentation with a copy of his latest book. How's your job going? Great. My company furnished me with a new laptop computer. Keep track of. She's always busy keeping track of her children. The teacher had a hard time keeping track of all the children. Let's keep track of how much we spend on food during our vacation. How many hamburgers did you eat? I couldn't keep track of them all. No way. He's on the weightlifting team. No way. You are forty years old. No way. You look so young. You met Elizabeth Taylor. No way. Did you hear that aliens have landed in L.A.? No way. On the other hand, he likes eating cookies. On the other hand, he usually gets a rash from them. New York is very romantic. On the other hand, it is very cold in the winter. Restaurants have a nice atmosphere. On the other hand, eating out is expensive. The new house is smaller than the old one. But on the other hand, it is in a better neighborhood. Stand to reason. It stands to reason that if you study hard, you will do well in school. It stood to reason that the criminal should be punished. It stands to reason that if you eat too much, you will gain weight. It's starting to rain. It stands to reason that we should close the window. Turn up. This turned up in the mail today. My wallet turned up in the lost and found office. Please call me if my car keys turn up. Did you find your missing dog? Yeah, he turned up last night. What if? What if no one comes to our party? What if you won the lottery? What if I get sick? What if I get sick? Who will take care of me? Call your mother. She just lives across town. In the yard. Do you know what became of the old man who lived on the corner, Sam? I saw that his house was up for sale. I heard he died of a sudden heart attack a few weeks ago. No way! He seems so healthy. I can't believe it either. The police should look into his death. Some interesting things about that family might turn up. What are you talking about? That old man was a millionaire. What if one of his children wanted that money? On the other hand, maybe his family just has a history of bad hearts. You've been reading too many detective novels, Sam. You never know, Max. Things like that don't only happen in novels. <music> Idioms in context. Mark had a pet parrot named Billy. He liked to let Billy out of his cage so that he was free to walk around the house. Mark did not bother to keep track of Billy when he was out because the bird never got into trouble. One day, Mark let Billy out of his cage as usual. Suddenly, Billy flew out the window. At first, Mark didn't worry. 
Billy will turn up when he gets hungry, Mark thought. On the other hand, what if Billy gets caught and eaten by a dog or cat? Or what if it gets too cold outside? What if he can't find any food? He might die of hunger. Mark did his best to find Billy over the next two days, but he had no luck. He began to think that his parrot was gone for good. Mark knew something terrible must have become of Billy because he didn't come home. Then a phone call took Mark by surprise. The person on the phone asked, Is this Mark? I think I have your parrot. No way! Really? Mark exclaimed in surprise. Then he asked, How did you know my phone number? The caller said, Your parrot furnished me with the number. It keeps saying, Hello? You have called 2437855. This is Mark. Please leave a message. So it stands to reason that this is your bird. Then Mark remembered that Billy's cage was next to the answering machine. Lesson 13 At Home Target Idioms At First Glance At first glance, he looks similar to his brother, but now I can see the difference. The problem looked easy at first glance. At first glance, she seemed to be very young. What do you think of my drawing? At first glance, it looks like a monkey in a suit. Attend to she attended to her guests. She had to attend to the guests in the other room. The staff attended to our every need at the resort. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that I have to leave. No problem. I have some things to attend to as well. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. The dog ran back and forth across the yard. The tennis players hit the ball back and forth for almost five minutes. So you work in New York, but you live in Vermont? Yes, I drive back and forth every weekend. Be no use, ing. It's no use getting upset over an ex-girlfriend. It's no use getting upset over a broken glass. I tried to cheer her up, but it was no use talking to her. It's no use trying to fix that old TV again. You're right. Let's buy a new one. Clear cut. It looks like we have a clear cut winner. That is the most clear cut explanation of the theory I have ever heard. There did not seem to be any clear cut solution to the problem. If you don't like your job, just quit. It's not so clear cut. My boss is also my father in law. Drive one crazy. He's beginning to drive me crazy. Those mosquitoes are driving me crazy. He was trying to drive her crazy on purpose. That noise is driving me crazy. Sorry, I'll practice my violin somewhere else. Fed up with. I'm fed up with your behavior. She was fed up with living in such a small apartment. Aren't you fed up with having to work so much overtime? I am fed up with eating ham every day. Okay, tomorrow we'll have bacon. Play a part in. Regular exercise plays a part in staying healthy. The bad weather played a part in our decision to cancel the picnic. Education plays an important part in success. How did you put out the fire so quickly? Volunteer firefighters played a part in stopping the fire. Take into account. He didn't take into account the possibility that the bus might be late. She didn't take into account the fact that the bank was closed on Saturdays. Did you take into account the possibility that some people don't like seafood? I made reservations at the Milton Hotel for dinner. Did you take into account that we only have $20? Turn into. They say when I drink, I turn into a monster. The conversation turned into an argument. The frog turned into a handsome prince. 
Your puppy really eats a lot. Yes, he's going to turn into a big dog someday. At home, honey, I'm home. How was your day, dear? Terrible. I had to attend to a problem at our branch office all the way across town. Was traffic a problem or something? No, the situation at the branch office is the problem. There doesn't seem to be a clear-cut solution at the moment, so I will have to keep going over there. Then you won't be working in the head office for a while. Oh, I still have my work there too. So now I have to drive back and forth between the offices. This job is driving me crazy. Well, you've been complaining about this job for a while. If you are so fed up with it, why don't you try to find a new one? You're right. This job plays a part in making my life too stressful. I'm going to quit. Idioms and context. Sometimes at my job, I have to attend to work in the back of the store, like unpacking boxes or checking inventory. When someone comes in the store and they don't see anyone at first glance, they think the store is closed. Just to make it clear that I am in the store and ready to help, I put a bell on the counter. I also put a sign next to the bell that says, "Please ring the bell if you need help." I thought the bell was a clear-cut solution to my problem, and it worked great at first. I could always hear it even if I had on headphones and was listening to music. For the first week, I never missed a customer. Unfortunately, however, my great idea didn't last long. I didn't take into account the fact that some people might enjoy ringing the bell for fun. The bell started driving me crazy after a while. Children played a big part in this problem. They would come into the store, ring the bell, and run outside again. I had to keep running back and forth from the back of the store to the front. One day, a little boy took the bell and ran around the store, ringing it over and over again. I knew it was no use getting angry with the boy. He was just a child. However, I was really fed up with the bell. I threw it in a box and hid it under the counter. However, I forgot to take down the sign when I got rid of the bell. This turned into the real solution to my problem. Now, when someone comes into the store, I know that they need help when I hear them yell, "Hey, where is the bell?" Lesson fourteen, at the store. Target idioms. Be bound to. My parents are bound to disagree, but I've decided I'm moving to New York. My parents are bound to disagree with my decision to join the circus. The table was bound to break from all the weight put on it. What do you think Dad will say about the broken window? He's bound to be angry. Day in and day out. Day in and day out, clouds hung over the village. Day in and day out, our next-door neighbors argued. The rain fell day in and day out, flooding the small town. Why does Tim look so tired? He's been studying day in and day out for the big test. For sale, they put their house up for sale. The car I saw for sale yesterday has already been sold. You can find good fruits and vegetables for sale on the street during the summer. Why is your new boat for sale? My wife gets seasick. Give birth to. She is about to give birth to her baby. She gave birth to twins last week. How many puppies does a dog usually give birth to at one time? I want to have my baby in a hospital. I would rather give birth in my own home. Give in. He gave in to his parents' demands and cut his hair short. 
He kept asking until I finally gave in and invited him to join us. The protesters said they would not give in until all of their demands were met. That big guy keeps telling me to do his homework. Don't give in. Hand out. The store was handing out free cosmetics samples. Our teacher will hand out the final grades for the class on Friday. The store was handing out free samples of cake to the customers. Hey, where did you get that donut? They are handing out free food at the store. In one's way. I can't see anything. This big guy is in my way. The box was in my way, so I had to move it. She could not see the moon because the trees were in her way. Excuse me, your chair is in my way. Sorry. Make a difference. The doctor said that these pills will make a big difference. The new paint makes a big difference. Your house looks great now. It won't make much difference if we take the other road. I don't like black and white movies. Me neither. I think the color makes a difference. Tell A from B. I can't tell the real fruit from the plastic one. It was impossible to tell the real painting from the fake one. When they are wearing the same clothes, I can't tell one twin from the other. Did you know that Sally is colorblind? Yeah, she can't tell green from blue. Upside down. The sign was upside down. Somebody hung the picture upside down. The plane flew upside down for a few seconds. What are you going to do with those roses? I'm going to hang them upside down to dry. At the store. There are some socks for sale over there. Let's go look at them. They are bound to be more expensive here than at Quick Mart. The sign says they are only a dollar per pair. How much are they at Quick Mart? Ninety cents per pair. Ten cents does not really make a difference to me. I'll just buy them here. This must be a good sale. There are so many people in the way that you can hardly get to the socks. Let's go to the other side. There are fewer people over there. Wow, these are designer socks, but they are so cheap. They're not real designer socks. They're fake ones. How can you tell the real ones from the fake ones? Look at the designer symbol. It should go this way, but they put it on upside down. Idioms in context. Our neighbor's cat gave birth to kittens. Of course, as soon as my son saw the kittens for sale sign in our neighbor's yard, he wanted to go take a look at them. My husband and I knew that if our son saw the kittens, he was bound to want one for a pet. So we tried to avoid seeing them. Day in and day out, our son kept asking when we could go see the kittens. I kept telling my son he couldn't have a cat, but it didn't make a difference. He wanted to see them anyway. Finally, we gave in, and we all went to see them. There were several other people at my neighbor's house looking at the kittens. Our neighbor was standing next to the box, handing out kittens left and right for people to look at. There were plenty of kittens to go around. My husband and son went to see the kittens. But I wanted nothing to do with them. I stayed near the door and tried not to be in anyone's way. After looking at the kittens, my son ran over to me. "Come and see, mom," he said. "There are three boy kittens and two girl kittens." I asked my son, "How can you tell the boys from the girls?" My son said, "Dad told me. He turns them upside down and looks under them. I think it's written on the bottom." Lesson fifteen. At school, target idioms. As soon as, 
I'll be there as soon as I can. As soon as you delete a worthless file, you'll need it. As soon as the sun rises in the morning, the farmer starts working. Are you coming to lunch? I'll be there as soon as I finish this. Attribute A to B. Most people attribute the good economy to the new president. Scientists attribute the warm weather to pollution. Many of the deaths in the earthquake were attributed to poor construction. Why are your shoes in my yard? I attribute that to your dog. Be apt to. He is apt to be late for class because he has a night job. Without a map, you are apt to get lost on the small, confusing streets. He is apt to fail the test because he didn't study. Let's go shopping. It's a holiday. Stores are apt to be closed. Cut down on. After that night, he decided to cut down on alcohol. We cut down on driving because the price of gasoline is too high. She cut down on eating snacks between meals. Why don't you want some cake? My dentist told me to cut down on sugar. End up. The ice cream ended up on the floor. They ended up working on the project all night because of the deadline. The extra food at the party ended up in the garbage. Let's climb over the fence and touch the tiger. No thanks. I don't want to end up as lunch. Get over, buddy. Get over it. It took her almost a week to get over her jet lag from the long flight. She got over her old boyfriend very quickly and started dating a new boy. How did you get over your cold so fast? I ate thirty oranges a day for three days. Get used to. It will take a long time to get used to her. After I got used to waking up early, I enjoyed my extra time in the morning. How long did it take you to get used to living in your new apartment? It's almost midnight. Aren't you tired? No, I'm used to going to bed late. In comparison with, the weather in the south is usually wetter in comparison with the north. In comparison with their first book, the author's second book was not very good. This rock is heavy in comparison with its size. Your house is so small. Yes, but in comparison with my old house, it's a palace. In no time, the police arrived in no time. If you make a few American friends, you can improve your English in no time. In no time, the firefighters arrived at the fire. Are we almost there? I am so hungry. Don't worry, we'll be there in no time. Used to, she used to have straight hair. My family used to eat dinner together, but now we are too busy. The excuse for missing homework used to be the dog ate it. Now it's the disc was erased. What is your favorite sport? I used to like squash, but now I like racquetball. At school, how do you like our new teacher, Tom? I don't like her. She doesn't teach very well in comparison with Miss Smith. Why do you say that? Miss Smith used to take her time and explain the lessons with lots of interesting examples, but our new teacher goes too fast. Maybe you just need some time to get used to our new teacher's style of teaching. I'll probably end up failing this class. I can't even do the homework for Monday. I can help you. I'm sure I can explain the homework to you in no time. It probably won't even take an hour. That would be great, Mary. Can we meet on Saturday? I'm going to see a movie with a friend Saturday afternoon, but I can call you as soon as I get back from the movie. Thanks. See you on Saturday, Mary. Idioms in context. Research has found that as soon as a man and a woman get married, they start putting on weight. 
Men usually gain about four pounds. Women gain about five. Researchers attribute the weight gain to changes in the exercise habits of newly married couples. A newly married man who used to spend several hours each week exercising is apt to stop exercising in order to spend more time with his new wife. After the couple gets used to their new life together, they may begin to exercise again. However, usually the couple ends up exercising for a shorter time together in comparison with the time they exercised separately before marriage. One way a husband and wife can get over this problem is to begin to exercise together soon after the wedding. The food a couple eats can also help the couple control their weight. In general, most people need to cut down the foods which are high in fat. Couples who are used to eating a lot of beef, fried food, and desserts should try to eat more vegetables, chicken, and fish. Couples who start putting on weight after marriage can get back to their old healthy weight in no time with the proper diet and exercise. Lesson 16. In the elevator. Target idioms. Beats me. Beats me. Do you know who this book belongs to? Beats me. It beats me why anyone would want to live in Antarctica. Where is Jim today? Beats me. Date back to. The book dates back to the 19th century. This painting dates back to the 1st century. Some buildings in Europe date back several hundred years. Professor, how old is that Viking ship? It dates back to the 14th century. Have access to. You need to type in your password to have access to the file. Only employees have access to this part of the factory. You need his password to have access to his email account. This hotel room is very nice. We also have access to the fitness center. Lead the way. Maybe you should lead the way. She led the way to the mansion's dining room. If you follow me, I will lead the way to a brighter future. I am afraid to go into that dark building. Don't worry. I'll lead the way. Let down. You really let me down. I was let down by the second movie in the series. The first one was so good. Please don't let me down. I'm counting on you. I can't believe that your girlfriend forgot your birthday. Yeah, I feel really let down. Might as well. My next class doesn't begin for 45 minutes. I might as well do some studying. I might as well go with you. I have nothing else to do. Nobody is going to eat the rest of the cake. You might as well throw it out. The movie doesn't start for another 10 minutes. We might as well get some popcorn while we're waiting. Not at all. Do you mind? No, not at all. The peppers were not spicy at all. Would you mind giving me a ride home? Not at all. Do you think this dress is ugly? Not at all. Put out. Don't forget to put out the fire before you go to sleep. The firefighters put out the fire before it spread to other houses. Be sure to put out the candles before you leave. Sir, please put out your cigarette. Sorry, I didn't know this was a non-smoking area. Stand out. He really stands out. With that green hair, she really stands out in the crowd. The white puppy stands out among the black ones. Was it easy to find the house? Yeah, the pink paint really makes it stand out. Think over. He had to carefully think over his next move. Take some time to think over my suggestions. She thought over the offer from her boss for several days. Have you decided what to order? No, I need more time to think it over. In the elevator. 
Hey, why did the elevator stop? Beats me. Push the button for the first floor again. It's not working, stupid elevator. It probably dates back to the time of the dinosaurs. Calm down, sir. I'm sure the problem is not at all serious. Someone will fix it soon. We might as well just try to relax. There's nothing we can do. How can I relax? We're probably running out of air. I'm going to try and open that little door on the ceiling and climb out of here. Once I'm on top of the elevator, I'll have access to the cable and climb up to safety. I saw that in a movie. I'm not going to lift you up there. Are you crazy? We can't just wait here to die. Oh, see, the elevator is moving again. I knew the repair people wouldn't let us down. We're saved. Idioms in context. A man and his wife were on a short business trip to China. They had some free time one afternoon and thought they might as well see some sights. They signed up for a tour of a local temple. When they arrived, a monk came up to greet them. He told them that they would have access to special places in the temple. The couple hoped they would see some beautiful things, and they were not let down. The monk led the way to a small building. It was very dark inside. Then the monk lit a candle. Inside there were many rare paintings and sculptures. The gold statues really stood out. The monk said that many of them dated back to the 12th century. The monk put out the candle and they went outside again. After he shut the door, the monk asked, "Would you do us a favor?" Would you write something in English for our future visitors? Of course, the couple did not have to think over the monk's request. Not at all, the diplomat's wife said. It will be our pleasure. The monk quickly ran off to find something for the couple to write on. Any idea what he wants us to write? Asked the wife. Beats me, her husband said. Finally, the monk came back with two pieces of wood. The monk said, "Could you write the word 'ladies' on this piece of wood and 'gentlemen' on the other piece?" Lesson seventeen. At the office, target idioms. A far cry from. It's a far cry from the kind of pizza I usually eat. This hotel is a far cry from the last place we stayed. It's much nicer here. The food here is a far cry from real Chinese food. This beach is so dirty. Yeah, it's a far cry from the picture in the magazine. Be better off. You're better off without him. You would be better off living with your parents while you are in college. Women are better off now than they were one hundred years ago. It's raining very heavily. You'd be better off staying here until it stops. Be out of the question. Forget it. It's out of the question. Don't ask me if you can go. It is out of the question. She knew that leaving work early was out of the question. Dad, can I quit school and become a professional wrestler? That's out of the question. Get through. I tried to call, but I couldn't get through. She was on hold for fifteen minutes before she finally got through to the operator. The storm damaged the phone line, so I can't get through to my parents' house. Have you gotten through to Kim yet? No, the line is still busy. Ill at ease, her father made him feel ill at ease. He always felt a little ill at ease in crowded elevators. The hostess tried to make sure none of her guests fell ill at ease at the party. I feel ill at ease with you driving a motorcycle. Don't worry, Mom. I'll be careful. In charge of, you'll be in charge of the ceiling. 
Can you tell me who is in charge of cleaning the office at night? No one was in charge of the project, so it was never completed. What do you do at your job? I'm in charge of sales and marketing. Look into. Your ray gun was stolen at 8 p.m.? I'll look into this right away. He was looking into going to medical school. I don't know much about that subject, but I'll look into it when I have time. Why don't we see if we can stay an extra day? Good idea. I'll look into it. Think nothing of it. Thank you. Think nothing of it. Thank you for helping me. Think nothing of it. I appreciate what you did. Think nothing of it. Thanks for saving me from that hungry bear. Oh, think nothing of it. Think up. He thought up a great idea. She was always thinking up new ways to make extra money. He had to think up an excuse for being late. Let's think up a way to surprise Dan on his birthday. How about inviting all his old girlfriends? What's up? Hi. What's up? Jim, how's it going? What's up, Bob? What's up, Sam? Not much, Mark. What's up with you? Hi, Sarah. What's up? Oh, nothing much. Just waiting for the bus. At the office. Mark, I haven't seen you around the office for a while. What's up? I had to take some time off after my accident and stay at home. Who was in charge of the office while you were gone? Lisa. I would be better off at home resting, but my staying at home any longer was out of the question. You look okay to me. Aren't you fully recovered? No. I can't move my left arm very much. And my typing speed is a far cry from what it used to be. My fingers aren't as flexible as they were. Hey, if you need anything typed, just send it to me. Thanks, Sue. That would be a great help. Think nothing of it. I'm happy to help. <music> Idioms in context. My sister called me last week. She tried to get through to me on the phone for over an hour. I was on the internet at the time, so my phone was busy. I apologized. I'm sorry, Kim. I didn't plan to use the computer for so long. I guess I wasn't keeping track of time. So, what's up? Kim sounded a little ill at ease when she answered. I need your help. You know that we have moved. I wanted to have a party to meet our neighbors, but I think I invited too many people. Now I am in charge of cooking dinner for 12 people tomorrow night. I told Kim, maybe you should look into getting pizza delivered or something. No, Kim said. Pizza is out of the question. Everyone is expecting a home cooked meal. Can you think of any good recipes I can try? I'm a far cry from a chef or anything, but I know how to make a few simple things that are good for parties. I told my sister how to make them. Kim said, Your ideas sound great, Alice. Thanks. Think nothing of it, I said. But wouldn't you have been better off calling mom for recipes? Kim replied, Mom is good at cooking. Her recipes might be too hard for me. I know that if you can cook something, I can cook it. Lesson 18. In the Park. Target idioms. Catch a cold. He caught a cold last weekend. My mother told me to always wear a hat so I wouldn't catch a cold. He walked home in the rain without an umbrella and caught a cold. What's wrong with you? I caught a cold. Achoo! Close call. That was a close call. It was a close call, but we managed to keep the cat alive. 
I had a close call crossing the street today. A car almost hit me. The firefighter saved me just before the house blew up. Wow, that was a close call. Do without. Looks like we'll have to do without rain again today. She didn't have money for a drink, so she did without one. He couldn't do without his cell phone, so he had to go home and get it. I forgot to bring my hair dryer. Don't worry. I think you can do without it. Dry out. Your plants will dry out if you don't give them water. The ground in the desert dries out very quickly after a heavy rain. Hang that wet towel on the back of the chair so it will dry out. What should we do with all these grapes? Let's dry them out and make raisins. Fool around. They always fool around when they should be studying. What are you kids doing out there? We're just fooling around. Don't fool around with matches. You could start a fire. Why did Jimmy have to stay after school? He was fooling around in class. Get nowhere with. I am getting nowhere with my homework. I was getting nowhere with my project, so I took a break. She got nowhere with the problem until a friend gave her an idea. Do you need some help? Yes, thanks. I'm getting nowhere with this math problem. Hold back. They had to hold him back. We tried to hold back the flood, but there was too much water. When she passed other people with dogs, she had to hold back her dog. Did you shake hands with the president? No, his bodyguards held back the crowd. In time, he didn't arrive in time to catch the bus. We got to the theater in time to see the previews. He ran, but he didn't arrive in time to catch the train. Did Amy miss her flight? No, she got there just in time. Pay off. All that time in the gym really paid off. I passed the test. All that extra studying paid off. Private piano lessons are expensive. Do you think they will pay off? Wow, you look great. Thanks. Joining that health club really paid off. Succeed in. He succeeded in getting the promotion. The only way to succeed in medical school is to study day and night. He succeeded in building a very successful company before he reached the age of thirty. I don't think I can succeed in math class. Don't worry, I'll help you study. In the park. Where are your two little girls, Kim? They're over there, fooling around in the sandbox. That's so nice that they can play together. Oh, they're not always nice when they play together. Last time we came to the park, I caught Linda trying to make Mary jump in the fountain. It was quite cold that day, so I'm sure Mary would have caught a cold if she had gone in. So you got there in time to stop her. It was a close call. Linda succeeded in getting Mary to put her feet in the fountain. I held her back from going all the way in the water. Sisters can be mean sometimes, but they can be great friends too. I agree, little sister. Idioms in context. One Halloween, a pumpkin truck had an accident on a bridge. It was a close call, but the driver was not hurt. However, all the pumpkins fell into the river. That afternoon, my friend and I were down by the river, fooling around. Suddenly, we saw a pumpkin floating by. Then another one floated by. Then lots of them floated by. The pumpkins from the truck were floating down the river. My friend and I tried to catch a pumpkin before they all floated away. My friend leaned out over the water while I held him back by his belt. We tried many times.
but the pumpkins were too far out from the shore. We are getting nowhere with this plan. Let's go in the water and get them, I said. Not me, my friend said. That water looks really cold. There were only a few more pumpkins coming down the river. I didn't want to do without one of those pumpkins. Then I had an idea. I would trick my friend. Why don't we try again with a stick? I said. My friend took a stick and leaned out over the water again as I held him. At that moment, I let go of his belt and he fell into the river. I'm sorry, my hand slipped, I shouted. My friend started to swim back to shore. Hold on to some pumpkins, I suggested. It will be easier to swim. My friend put two pumpkins under his arms and kicked back to shore. My plan paid off. We finally succeeded in getting some pumpkins. We took the pumpkins back to his house. My friend changed clothes so he wouldn't catch a cold and hung up his wet clothes to dry out before his mother got home. Then we planned how to carve our beautiful pumpkins in time for Halloween. Lesson 19 At the dinner table Target idioms All in all All in all, he just doesn't seem normal. All in all, I think the meeting went very well. All in all, she just doesn't seem like the right person for the job. How was your trip to China? All in all, it was a great experience. Burst out he suddenly burst out singing. He burst out laughing when his friend walked in the room. My mother burst out crying when she met me at the airport. Why is your girlfriend mad at you? I burst out laughing when I saw her new hairstyle. Change one's mind. I changed my mind and decided on green instead of blonde. She changed her mind and bought the dress that was on sale. If you read this book, it will change your mind about eating eggs. Have you changed your mind about going to dinner? Yes, sorry. I just don't have time tonight. Criticize A for B. They always criticized him for being slow. His co-workers criticized him for being arrogant. Many people criticized the president for not standing by his principles. The old manager never did any work. Yeah, lots of people criticized him for being lazy. Cross out. He crossed out like and wrote love. She crossed out her ex-boyfriend's name in her diary. He crossed out the mistake in the essay. Why did you cross out Kelly's number in your book? That's her old phone number. Get the better of. My curiosity got the better of me, and I opened the letter. His conscience got the better of him, so he called her to apologize. I had to open the package. My curiosity got the better of me. That guy at work is driving me crazy. Don't let him get the better of you. In regard to. In regard to your question, the answer is yes. In regard to your request, we are sending you information about our new product. She called in regard to the job opening in the advertising department. In regard to your last test, I think you could have done better. I know. I will study harder next time. Look over. He had to look over some papers before leaving work today. Did you look over that report I left on your desk? The teacher said he would look over our essay to give us suggestions. Let's look over our travel plans again. Why? We're just going to the store. Name A after B. This is your great uncle Jim. You were named after him. My parents named me after my grandfather. She named her cat after a cartoon character. Why is your town called Bismarck? It's named after a kind of donut. Stick around. Why don't you stick around? Stick around. We'll be right back. 
He stuck around until his friend got off work. Hey, look! Those policemen just ran into that store. Let's stick around and see what happens. At the dinner table, how was school today? Not bad. The principal announced that he wants to name the school after his favorite baseball player, and one girl in my English class burst out crying today. What happened? The girl sitting next to her criticized her for wearing too much makeup. How rude! Then the girl's friend said she wanted to fight the rude girl after school. Did anyone stop the fight? I don't know. I was going to stick around after school to watch, but then I changed my mind and came home right after school. All in all, it sounds like an eventful day. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Idioms in context. One Sunday morning, a puppy showed up in our yard. It stuck around all day, so in the evening, I tried to get it to come inside the house. All in all, it seemed like a healthy puppy. It was just a little dirty. The puppy was not wearing a collar, so we had no idea who it belonged to. It stayed with us for a few days. I even named it Brando after my favorite movie star. But my wife criticized me for being selfish. She said, "That puppy belongs to someone, and they probably want it back. You have to try and find the owner." Eventually, my conscience got the better of me, and I changed my mind about keeping the puppy. I made a sign describing the puppy and planned to put it up around the neighborhood. My wife looked over the sign. Someone who is not the owner may want the puppy. I suggest you cross out the description. Then you'll know the real owners because they will be able to describe the dog. I changed the sign to read "Found One Puppy." Then I put our phone number at the bottom of the sign. That evening we got a call. A young woman was on the phone. She said, "I'm calling in regard to the puppy you found." She described the puppy exactly, so we knew it was hers. The young woman came to our house in less than an hour. When she saw the puppy, she smiled and burst out. Oh, Lucy! It's so good to see you again. Lesson twenty. At the beach. Target idioms. All along, she knew all along that they would get together. He knew about the surprise party all along. The machine was not plugged in all along. Who sent you all those secret love notes? I thought it was John, but it really was Jim all along. Be true of. This stereotype is not true of all Americans. These statistics are true of high school students. But not university students. That stereotype is not true of all women. I hate dogs. They are always so noisy. But that's not true of all dogs. Mine is very quiet. Cut out. You should really cut out smoking that stuff. I am trying to cut out drinking during the week. Cut it out. What do you think of my new dance moves? Cut it out. I'm trying to study. Every so often, every so often he feels homesick. Every so often he goes to a movie by himself. We hear from our friends in Canada every so often. Do you like sports? No, but every so often I go hiking. On account of, the game was canceled on account of the rain. She didn't call us on account of the fact she was busy. On account of the hot weather, we stayed indoors. On account of you, there's no pizza left for me. Sorry, I was really hungry. Pass away. The fish passed away last night. 
My grandmother passed away last year. When did he pass away? Why is the shoe store closed today? The owner passed away this morning. Speak up. I can't hear you. Could you please speak up? I can't hear you. Speak up. No one spoke up in class, so the teacher asked the question again. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Could you speak up, please? I said, Your stereo is turned up too loud. Stay put. Stay put. I will go and look for him, but you stay put. He stayed put in his company, even though many of his co workers quit. Jake is on the phone. He just arrived at the airport. Tell him to stay put. I'll go pick him up. Suffer from. He suffers from severe headaches. My mother suffers from depression. People who use computers all the time often suffer from back problems. Why are you wearing a hat today? I'm suffering from bad hair. Under the weather. She missed the party because she was feeling under the weather. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Are you feeling under the weather? Why are you going home early? I feel a bit under the weather. At the beach. Isn't this a great beach, Carol? Could you speak up, please? The waves are so loud. What do you think of the beach? Oh, it's beautiful. It's my first time by the ocean. So you never swam in the ocean as a kid? Nope. On account of the fact that I grew up in Colorado, I never got to see the ocean when I was young. I never even learned how to swim. Me neither. I suffered from swimmer's ear as a child, so my parents made me cut out swimming when I was six or seven years old. So, why do you like to come to the beach if you don't swim? I like to come to lay in the sun. That is true of most people here, I think. But every so often, I walk down and stick my feet in the water. <music> Idioms in context. Some people are afraid to be alone. That is true of my wife. We live in a nice neighborhood, but she is still afraid when she is alone at night. I think she suffers from a slight case of paranoia. I don't like to leave her alone, but every so often I have to go out of town. One time I had to travel to attend a funeral of an aunt who had passed away. My wife was feeling under the weather and decided to stay home. That evening, Someone knocked on the door. My wife was in the living room at the time. The person knocked again. My wife just stayed put in the living room. She didn't answer the door on account of the fact that she was a little scared. The person at the door kept knocking and then spoke up. Hello? Hello? My wife was becoming more and more anxious. She wished the person would cut out the knocking and go away. Then my wife had an idea. She started barking like a dog. The person at the door stopped knocking and went away. The next evening I was home when the boy who delivers our newspaper came to collect money from us. He told me, I came here last night, but your wife started barking at me, so I left. I guess our paper boy can tell the dog's bark from a human's bark. Or maybe he knew my wife was home all along. Lesson 21. At the Orphanage. Target idioms. Amount 2. The list amounts to $12. All of the money we collected amounts to $200. Sales during the Christmas season amount to half of the store's yearly profits. All our work today doesn't seem to amount to much. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever finish painting this house. 
at the most, at most. I can only drink at most four or five shots of whiskey before I get sick. I plan to study for two hours at the most. At most, the boat can hold ten people. How long will this flight take? Four hours at the most. Be broke. He couldn't go to the movies because he was broke. He was broke, so he borrowed money from his roommate. How can you be broke already? You just got paid. Hey, let's go out to eat tonight. I can't. I'm broke. Come to an end. When the party came to an end, there was a big mess to clean up. We left before the movie came to an end. The war came to an end soon after the bomb was dropped. It's been raining for a week. I'm going crazy. Don't worry. It will come to an end tomorrow. Deal with. I don't think I can deal with this every day. How do you deal with all the stress at work? She is avoiding him because she doesn't want to deal with him. I can't deal with all this noise. Maybe you should get a different job. Either A or B. With any main dish, you can choose either soup or salad on the side. I will go to either Mexico or Canada for my vacation. You can have either cheese or sour cream on your baked potato. You can either ride with me or with your mother. I'll go with mom. She's a better driver. Fall short of. The team fell short of their dream of winning the championship. The movie really fell short of my expectations. Although the runner's time was good, it fell short of the world record. Business is not as good this year. Yes, we fell short of our goal of selling one thousand pizzas. In need, in need of. After trying that spicy dish, he was in need of some water. This apartment is in need of a good cleaning. Our club is in need of a new president because the old one quit. Hey, I can see your toes. I am in need of some new socks. Or so. Remember to stir the spaghetti sauce every fifteen minutes or so until it is ready. There were fifty or so people at the wedding. Cook the chicken for twenty minutes or so. When will Bob arrive? He'll be here in about an hour or so. Pay back. Now I can pay back my loan. He still hasn't paid back the money he owes me. Thanks for the money. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. Why are you working three jobs? I have to pay back the money I borrowed from the bank. At the orphanage. Hi, I'm from the newspaper. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about the orphanage? It will only take a minute or so. I'm just a volunteer here, but I'll try to answer your questions. Great. First, how many kids do you have here? I think we have about forty-five kids here now, but the orphanage can hold sixty kids at most. Wow, that's a lot of kids to take care of. How do you deal with them all? One by one. Is the orphanage in need of anything? I can put that in the article I'm writing. The kids can always use extra clothes. Anything else? Well, we would be grateful to anyone who can give either their money or their time through donations and volunteer work. Even a little work can amount to a big help. Idioms in context. My parents give me money each semester for my expenses at college. I try to live for a whole semester on what my parents give me, but I usually fall short of my goal. Before the end of the last semester, I was broke. I'm sure my parents would have been happy to send more money if they had known I was in need. However, I didn't want to have more to pay back. Besides. 
I wanted to deal with the situation myself. First, I tried to go without lunch every day, but I was too hungry to study after that. There was only a week or so left before the semester came to an end. I thought about selling my books to make a little money. I knew my books would not amount to much. At most, I could only get twenty dollars per book, but it was better than nothing. I could either sell my books or starve. I chose to sell my books. When I went to take my final exam in history, the professor said, "This test is especially difficult. If you brought your book, you can use it during the test." Somehow, I managed to get a B on the final exam without the book. I guess everything worked out in the end. But from now on, I'm not going to sell back my books until all of my classes are over. Lesson Twenty Two, in the police station. Target idioms. As far as, as far as I know, this is the right place. As far as I know, she was not planning to come to the meeting. From the top floor, you can see as far as the river. Can I get a ride from you? Sure, I can take you as far as Chicago. Be up to one. It's up to you. I'll eat anything. What do you want to do? It's up to you. It was up to me to choose the university I wanted to attend. Do you think you can leave work early? It's up to my boss. Carry out. He carried out the sofa. I saw him carrying out the trash this morning. She helped him carry out the boxes. The taxi will be here in a few minutes. Let's carry out your luggage. Follow up on. Remember to follow up on the reports. He decided not to follow up on the job offer. Did you follow up on that complaint about the leaky water pipe? Did you call that person who wanted to buy the house? Sorry, I didn't have time to follow up on it. Get even with. He wanted to get even with the fisherman. He wanted to get even with her for making him look foolish. There is no point in trying to get even with anyone. Revenge is an endless cycle. What are you doing with that with that water balloon? I'm going to get even with my sister for scratching my CD. In light of, in light of the new information, he had to rethink the situation. In light of the new evidence, the judge dismissed the court case. In light of the recent thefts, the company is increasing security. Why don't you want to go out dancing? In light of my recent test. In light of. No wonder. There's a bowling ball in the box. No wonder it's so heavy. She was sick. No wonder she looked so bad yesterday. No wonder the TV doesn't work. It's not plugged in. Kristen just got back from her trip to Hawaii. No wonder she's so tan. Now that, now that she has free time, she can work in her garden. Now that I have some free time, I plan to do a lot more reading. He is going to start buying stock now that the market is low. Now that I have been exercising, I feel great. Really, I feel more tired. Up to now, up to now, I always thought you were a vegetarian. Up to now, the weather has been very warm for this time of year. The writer has published five books up to now. I made pig's foot soup. Are you hungry? I was up to now. Use up. Who used up all of the toilet paper? If you use up the milk, please buy some more. Who used up all the toothpaste? I use up three tubes of gel every month. Maybe you should get a haircut. In 
the police station. Any news on the Jones case, detective? I followed up on an idea that one of the neighbors gave me. He told me that Mr. Jones had recently lost a lot of money in a business deal, but the money he lost was actually borrowed from a friend. Maybe this friend wanted to get even with Mr. Jones. Any idea who the friend was? Up to now, we have found more than eight letters from a woman named Martha Dixon, and several of the letters mention an investment of ten thousand dollars. Jones lost ten thousand dollars of Dixon's money. No wonder she was mad at him. In light of what I have learned, I think we should ask Martha Dixon some questions. At her home or here at the station, it's up to you. Let's visit her at home. Idioms in context. One day, a man was preparing to leave on a trip. He often traveled on business back and forth between New York and his home in Boston. His wife was carrying out his suitcase to the car when it suddenly opened. Inside were shorts, shirts, sandals, and a swimming suit. In light of the fact that her husband had packed all of his casual clothes, she started to doubt that he was going on a business trip. The next day, she followed up on her suspicion by calling the airline that her husband traveled on. She asked the man at the airline, "Can you tell me how many frequent flyer miles my husband and I have?" The man looked up their account and told the woman, "Up to now, you have almost one hundred thousand miles, if I include your husband's most recent flight." The woman was surprised. She said. That doesn't make sense. How did my husband collect so many miles flying to New York? The man at the airline told her, "Those miles include his flights to New York and his flight to the Bahamas." The Bahamas? The woman thought. No wonder I can't find the sunscreen. The woman knew just how to get even with her husband. Now that she knew her husband was having fun without her, she would also go on vacation. She wanted to use up all of the frequent flyer miles by going as far as she could. "I'd like to reserve a ticket for myself, please," she said. "When is your next flight?" "There are two flights leaving this afternoon: one to Chicago and one to Paris. It's up to you." "Paris would be perfect," the woman smiled. Lesson twenty-three. On an old dirt road. Target idioms. Be concerned about. I'm concerned about you. He was concerned about his hair because a lot of it fell out. Aren't you concerned about the world population? I am concerned about Jenny. Me too. She hasn't come to work for three days. Break down. The bus broke down at the side of the road. When the car broke down, they had to get out and walk. I'm sure our refrigerator is going to break down. It's over twenty years old. What's wrong with the copy machine? It broke down yesterday. Get stuck. He got stuck in the mud. Her boot got stuck in the mud while she was hiking. I got stuck on the third problem, so I couldn't finish the homework. This ring got stuck on my finger. Try putting some butter on it. Have nothing to do with. Stay out of it. This has nothing to do with you. The hot weather this summer has nothing to do with global warming. Our professor's lectures have nothing to do with the topics in our textbook. I think you are sick because you ate all that cheese. That has nothing to do with it. Look on A as B. He looks on his brother as a role model. Do you look on your career as being fulfilling? 
The class looks on the teacher as a friend. Can you join us for a game of golf? No, my wife looks on golf as a waste of time and money. Put away. Where did you put away my old comic books? I put my skis away for the summer. She put away her jewelry in a box in the back of her closet. Are those the gifts for Matt's party? Yeah, I have to put them away before he gets home. Relieve A of B. She relieved her friend of his keys because he was drunk. The teacher relieved him of his pocket knife. Those books look heavy. Let me relieve you of some of them. Why are you home so early? I am feeling sick, so my boss relieved me of my duties tonight. Take for granted. Don't take the nice weather for granted. I took it for granted that my alarm clock would wake me up. Many people took it for granted that the economy would continue to do well. Why are you taking your umbrella? I don't take it for granted that it will stay sunny. To say nothing of, their coffee is delicious. To say nothing of their cakes, the soups there are delicious. To say nothing of the desserts, the library at our university is beautiful. To say nothing of the music hall. How was your trip? The weather was wonderful. To say nothing of the food. Trade in. It is almost impossible to trade in an old computer. The car dealer only gave her one thousand dollars when she traded in her car. I want to trade in my motorcycle for a faster one. Do you think I could trade in my bike for a new one? I think you should just give it away. On an old dirt road. Are you sure this is the right direction, honey? I am concerned about our safety. Relax, honey. What could happen? The car could break down for one thing. The tires are terrible, to say nothing of the engine. What if we get stuck in a hole or something? The car is fine, and this road is not that bad. Why don't you look on the drive as an adventure rather than a nightmare? Watch out for that animal! Stop! Wow, that was a close call. Are you all right? <sighs> I'm fine, but since we are stopped, let me relieve you of the keys. I'm going to drive from now on. <music> Idioms in context. In college, I still lived with my parents. But I had a job; I could pay for a lot of my own expenses. Because of this, my parents were able to put away some of their own money in the bank. After a little while, they had enough to buy a new car. My parents traded in their old car and got a new luxury car. The new car had a beautiful interior, to say nothing of its sound system. My parents loved that car. I had my own car, but it was old and often broke down. Sometimes I had to borrow my parents' car. One time I borrowed the car and brought it back late. I got stuck in a traffic jam because of an accident between a car and a truck. I didn't get home until almost midnight. I took it for granted that my parents would be asleep. However, my mother was waiting for me when I got home. She relieved me of the car keys with a serious look on her face. I told her, "Mom, you have to look on me as an adult now. You don't have to wait up for me." My mother told me that her waiting up had nothing to do with me. She was concerned about the car and couldn't sleep. Lesson twenty four, in the market. Target idioms. As for, I can get along with most of my family. 
As for my sister, we fight a lot. As for me, I would rather stay home tonight and watch television. You can come in. As for the dog, he has to stay out. I am going to the nightclub with Jim and Terry. Do what you like. As for me, I'm going to bed. Deal in. This store deals in pets. This website deals in computer hardware, not software. Our shop only deals in imported goods from China. Do you have any large size hats? Sorry, we don't. We mostly deal in children's clothes. Dream up. I wonder how he dreams up these things. It's amazing how he dreamed up the idea for the movie. She dreamed up the idea of using stamps as wallpaper. Did you hear that Will made a house out of an old train car? Wow, he dreams up such interesting things. Find fault with. They're always finding faults with his girlfriend. My friend always finds fault with my cooking. His boss found fault with much of his work, so he got fired. Why don't you like the new art teacher? He's always trying to find fault with my paintings. Get out of. Let's get out of here. She had a note from her doctor to get out of class. I think there is going to be trouble. Let's get out of here. I have a headache. I think I should lie down. Liar! You're just trying to get out of mowing the lawn. Go wrong. Take this emergency money just in case anything goes wrong. Something went wrong with the computer, so the system crashed. If anything goes wrong, give me a call, and I'll be happy to come and help. Why is this spaghetti blue? Something went wrong with the recipe. In addition to, he coaches basketball. In addition to his office job. In addition to flowers. I am also allergic to chicken. She enjoys playing the piano in addition to singing. In addition to getting fired, I had a flat tire on the way home. Sounds like you had a terrible day. Mess up. Why do you always mess up everything? He messed up the recipe, so the food tasted terrible. How could you mess up the plan? It was so easy. I really messed up. I forgot my wife's birthday. Don't worry. Just buy her some flowers and say you're sorry. Sell out. Sorry, we're all sold out. The movie sold out the first weekend it was in theaters. She needed to buy some fish, but the store was sold out. Do you have any more DVD players? Sorry, we are all sold out. Thanks to, thanks to his new shoes, he plays soccer very well. Thanks to faster data transfer, you can watch movies on the internet. Thanks to a few bad students, the teacher canceled the class picnic. Wow, you got fifty dollars from your grandmother. Yes, thanks to her, I can go to the concert. In the market, did you sell out of oranges? If there are none with the fruit,、uh, we must be out. Really? Oh well. In addition to fruit, I also need some picnic supplies. I'm sorry, we only deal in foods. Our store doesn't sell picnic supplies. This really messes up my plans. I wanted to take my wife on a picnic today. There is another food store down the road, about two miles. As for picnic supplies, I'm not sure if you can find them there either. First, I can't find oranges, and now there are no picnic supplies. What else can go wrong? Is that thunder I hear? Idioms in context. 
Many people send flowers for special occasions. Unfortunately, some people forget special days and they have to send flowers late. As for these kind of customers, as for these kinds of customers, there is a way to get out of trouble with friends and loved ones thanks to a small flower shop in Chicago. This shop deals in flowers for all occasions, even late ones. The owner of the flower shop dreamed up a way to help his forgetful customers. The shop makes an excuse for late deliveries. If a customer has to send flowers late, the shop puts a note in with the delivery explaining what went wrong. For example, the note might say, We apologize for these flowers being late. Our truck broke down. Or, Our delivery man is sick. Or even, Our shop sold out of roses. So we had to wait for more to be delivered. The person receiving the flowers might find fault with the shop, but not with the person who sent the flowers. In addition to flowers, the shop also sells candy and small toys. So, the next time you mess up and have to send a late gift, keep this shop in mind. Lesson 25. In a restaurant. Target idioms. Anything but. I can eat anything but fish. I can watch anything but horror movies. He said he would do anything but go out dancing tonight. What do you want to listen to? Anything but jazz. Go Dutch. They decided to go Dutch on their date. We went out to dinner last night, but it wasn't a date. We went Dutch. I hate to go Dutch. I'll pay this time. You pay next time. Thanks for dinner. Let me pay. How about we go Dutch? Hang out. They always hung out at the mall. Teenagers like to hang out at the park. I usually hang out at my friend's house after school. Hey, Joe, what are you doing tonight? I'm just going to hang out at Kevin's house. In accordance with. In accordance with the law, young children are not allowed to smoke. The new laws are not in accordance with the old laws. The company completed all work in accordance with its contract. Why is your hair so short? I had to cut it in accordance with army rules. In terms of. The manual was not helpful in terms of finding the problem. In terms of cheap vacations, this is one of the best deals you will find. The book was not very useful in terms of teaching grammar. Which car is better? In terms of speed, the BMW is much better than the Ford. Keep one's word. I promise. He always keeps his word. She promised to call me, but she did not keep her word. It drives me crazy when people don't keep their word. Remember, you promised to wash the car. Don't worry, I'll keep my word. Lay off. Lay off! Lay off those drums. I'm trying to sleep. When are you going to lay off smoking? It's bad for you. Oh no, I've gained six pounds. Why don't you lay off snacks for a while? Live up to. He was worried about living up to his family's expectations. The movie did not live up to all the good reviews. The hotel really lives up to its reputation. It's excellent. Why did you change universities? Clown College really didn't live up to my expectations. See eye to eye. Do we see eye to eye on this issue? They saw eye to eye on almost every part of the project, so it was approved. She doesn't always see eye to eye with her husband about money. I guess we don't see eye to eye on the price. No, we don't. You're asking too much. Settle down. You kids had better settle down or else. The children did not settle down and go to sleep until after midnight. Settle down! It's just a little spider. 
I can't get to sleep. Why don't those dogs settle down? Maybe they are barking at a burglar. In a restaurant. This place really lives up to its reputation. Everything was delicious. It sure was, and in terms of the price, it's not that expensive either. How much is the bill? Never mind, I'm paying. Oh no, you're not paying. I'm paying. Give me the bill. I've got it. Don't worry. Give it to me. Lay off, Bob. I'm paying. I was the one who promised to take you out for your birthday, so I'm just keeping my word. Okay, I'll let you pay this time in accordance with the following condition. What condition? Next time, I get to pay. Next time, we can go Dutch, so there won't be any argument over the bill. Idioms in context. My friend and I don't really see eye to eye with regard to music. He thinks that rock and punk music are great, and most other kinds of popular music are okay. In fact, he listens to anything but classical music. On the other hand, I love classical music. A while ago, we were hanging out at a music store when my friend saw a poster. His favorite punk band was coming for a concert. He said that we should go together. At first, I told him no way, but he wouldn't lay off begging me to go with him. Finally, I gave in and said I would go if he promised me one thing: he had to promise to go to an orchestra concert with me. We saw the punk band first. I must admit that in terms of musical talent, the band we saw wasn't bad. Then it was his turn to see the orchestra. I was a little worried that my friend would not keep his word, but he did. Usually, my friend and I go Dutch when we go out together. However, I knew he would never pay to see an orchestra, so I bought his ticket. In accordance with our deal, I took my friend to see the symphony orchestra perform a night of Mozart. I had heard this orchestra was superb, and they certainly lived up to my high expectations. They were great. At first, my friend seemed restless. It was dark in the concert hall, but I could feel him moving around in his seat. Soon, however, he settled down and was very still. After the concert was over and the lights came back on, I asked my friend what he thought. He said, "I heard Mozart speaking to me in the music." I was surprised and said, "Really?" "Yeah," my friend said. He kept saying, "Go to sleep." Go to sleep, so I did. Lesson twenty-six, at the office. Target idioms. Drop someone a line. He decided to drop her a line. When you get to Rome, drop me a line. She dropped him a line explaining why she hadn't called him. Drop me a line sometime. Yes, let's keep in touch. How come? How come you don't eat chicken? How come this report is late? You're not coming to the party. How come? I heard you weren't coming to the game. How come? I hurt my knee making toast this morning. In brief. Dogs are happy, loyal, and friendly. In brief, they make great pets. In brief, this is the singer's best album. In brief, you must find my client not guilty. What was the result of the meeting? In brief, we are going to move to Mexico. Keep off, keep off the grass. Please keep off the carpet with your dirty shoes. We have to keep off the bench until the paint is dry. Please tell your kids to keep off the furniture. I will. Sorry, Mr. President. Let go of. 
Let go of me! He slowly let go of her hand, and she walked away. Don't let go of the rope! I'll fall! Let go of my purse! Sorry, I thought it was mine. Lie down. He decided to lie down for a few minutes. I'm just going to lie down and rest for a few minutes. The doctor told him to lie down on the examining table. Where's Bill? He's lying down on the couch. On behalf of. On behalf of flies everywhere, I want to thank you. She is collecting money on behalf of children in Africa. I am calling on behalf of Congressman Jones to ask for your support. Why are you going to New York? I'm going there on behalf of the manager. He's too sick to go. Owing to. Owing to the bad weather, the picnic was canceled. Owing to the rough water today, we can't go sailing. She had to go home early owing to a severe headache. Why aren't you in Atlanta? My plane can't leave, owing to the bad weather. Rule out. He ruled out cooking spaghetti because he didn't have enough pasta. I can rule out that the gift is a stereo because the box is too small. She ruled out going to Alaska because she didn't like cold weather. Who left the door unlocked last night? Well, we can rule out Mike. He's out of town. Yield to. She yielded to his demands for a cookie. I yielded to my girlfriend's demands for a ring. The president yielded to pressure from the people to cut taxes. How were the negotiations? Great! They yielded to our demand for a lower price. At the office. How come Alice's desk is empty? Didn't you hear? They let go of Alice a week ago. Of course, they made some excuse like the company had to cut expenses, but everyone knows they really fired her owing to her recent pregnancy. What? They can't do that. Everyone thinks things like that don't happen anymore, but I wouldn't rule it out in this case. She told them she was pregnant on Monday, and on Friday they fired her. I won't stand for this. I am going to drop her a line and see if I can help. What can you do? At least I can put her in touch with a friend of mine who is a lawyer. Then the lawyer can talk to the company on behalf of Alice and try to get her job back. Idioms in context. One day, when I was out working in my yard, a dog came up to me. I ruled out the idea that it was a wild dog because it looked well fed and was wearing a collar. The dog sat by my door and watched me. I ignored the dog and finished my work. Then, when I went into the house, the dog wanted to follow me inside. I finally yielded to him and let him in the door. The dog walked slowly around my living room, looking around. It was a very good dog. I didn't even have to tell it to keep off the furniture. Finally, the dog went to the corner to lie down. Then it fell asleep. When the dog woke up, it wanted to go out, so I opened the door and it walked away. The next day, the same thing happened. Over the next week, the dog kept coming back to sleep in the corner of my living room. Finally. I decided to drop the owner a line. I wrote a note that asked, "How come your dog comes over to my house to sleep every afternoon?" Then I put the note under the dog's collar. I let go of the dog, and it walked away as usual. The next day, the dog returned with another note. This note said, "On behalf of my dog, thanks for letting him sleep there." Owing to the fact that we have six young children, he can't get much rest at our house. In brief, the dog just needed to get away for a little while. Six kids! No wonder the dog was tired. (music) 
Lesson twenty seven. On the bus. Target idioms. As a matter of fact, everything was going wrong that day. As a matter of fact, the day was about to get worse. I know the man in the picture very well. As a matter of fact, he is my father. I like animals. As a matter of fact, I own a pet store. Have you seen Rachel? Yes, I have. As a matter of fact, she's waiting in your office. At random, the lottery numbers were picked at random. The police stop cars at random to check if the drivers had insurance. We will choose a number at random, and the person with that number will win. How did you get to be the captain of the team? They just picked at random. In favor of, his parents are not in favor of his career choice. Although I want to join the army, my parents are not in favor of it. After the big test, we were all in favor of going out for a drink. Why didn't you vote for him? Because he is in favor of raising taxes. Keep up, keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. She wanted to keep up swimming every day, but she was too busy. I am really nervous about the test. Just keep up a positive attitude, and you will do fine. Make a point of. He made a point of explaining everything he knew about the subject in class. He made a point of telling everyone he studied at Harvard. We should make a point of bringing this problem up at the next meeting. I think that Harry is mad at us. Yeah, he made a point of not talking to us at lunch. Make room for. Hey, do you think we can make room for my friend? We need to make room on the shelf for these books. Can you make room in the trunk of your car for one more bag? Can I ride with you? Maybe we can make room if one person sits on someone's lap. On the spot, he got caught with the stolen money, so we had to think of an excuse on the spot. He got the job on the spot. She had to think of an answer on the spot. Where's your dog? A man offered me five hundred dollars for it, so I sold it to him on the spot. Sum up. The last page of the report sums up all of the research. He will sum up his speech with a joke. To sum up, I would just like to congratulate the bride and groom and wish them many happy years together. How was your trip to the desert? I would sum up the experience by saying it was very hot. Waste one's breath. Don't waste your breath. I'll never take you back. She won't go out with you. Don't waste your breath asking her. He explained the grammar rule over and over, but he was wasting his breath. They didn't understand it. I'm going to ask Dad if I can go to Rome with my girlfriend. Don't waste your breath. You bet. Call me. You bet. Are you free tonight? You bet. Would you like some more pizza? You bet. Do you want to see a movie? You bet. <music> On the bus. You don't have to stand, Miss. I can make room for you here. I'll just put my briefcase on the floor. That's very kind of you. It's not every day a beautiful woman sits next to me on the bus. Thank you, but I'm not usually in favor of talking to strangers on the bus. Yes, this is a special day. I want to make a poem about you. What do you think? You don't have to keep up the conversation for my sake. I prefer to ride in silence. It's no trouble. I can create a poem on the spot. Well, you're wasting your breath on me. I don't want to hear your poem. You certainly tell it like it is, Miss. You're a very straightforward person. You bet I am. Excuse me, but I see an open seat up front. I'm moving. Nice talking to you.
idioms in context. I had a hard time dating my wife when I was in high school. In fact, she didn't want to have anything to do with me at first. She sat behind me in history class. The first time I saw her, I asked her out on the spot, but she turned me down. I wasn't discouraged though. The next time I asked her to go out with me, she told me, "Get lost." But I asked her the next day too. Then she said, "You're wasting your breath. I'm not going to go out with you." I even asked her friends to fix us up, but they all told me, "Forget it. She doesn't want to date you." Although my friends were in favor of me quitting, I kept up my pursuit of her. At lunch, I made a point of trying to sit at the same table with her. If none of her friends made room for me, I tried to sit at the table behind her. Still, I had no luck. Then one day, I fell asleep in class. The teacher was calling on students at random to answer questions, and he called on me while I was sleeping. My future wife noticed I was sleeping and tried to wake me up by shaking my shoulder. I must have jumped when she touched my shoulder because I fell out of my chair. Of course, everyone laughed at me. I guess she must have felt a little sorry for me because after class she told me, "I'm sorry I pushed you so hard. I guess I didn't know my own strength." No problem, I replied. As a matter of fact, I like strong women. She laughed and asked. <laughs> Do you want to go to the dance this weekend with me? Of course, I said. You bet. And to sum up, we have been together ever since. Lesson twenty-eight. In the kitchen. Target idioms. Come about. How did that come about? A chance like this doesn't come about every day. I hope a solution to the problem will come about soon. How did the problem with the stove come about? I was trying to melt my jewelry. Do away with. I must do away with the mouse that lives in my basement. The company is going to do away with paid overtime hours. I'm going to do away with all this old furniture and buy new things. Why don't we sell the old piano and get a new one? I could never do away with it. My grandmother gave it to me. In advance, it looked like a storm was coming, so I wanted to close the windows in advance. You should make reservations in advance. His girlfriend was coming, so he cleaned the house in advance. It's a very popular hotel. Are you sure you can get in? Don't worry. I booked a room three months in advance. From scratch, she made the pastry from scratch. This bread was made from scratch, not from a prepared mix. We had to start from scratch when the computer disk failed. These cookies are great. Thanks. I made them myself from scratch. In the long run, you will have problems in the long run if you keep drinking so much. In the long run, too much beef can cause serious health problems. You will make more money in the long run if you go to university now. Let's fix that leaky pipe right away. Yes, if we do it now, we'll have less trouble in the long run. On average, on average, the cost of living in the city is higher than in the country. On average, the price of computers has gone down. Most people eat fast food twice a week on average. How much sleep do you get on average? About seven hours a night. Set aside. He set aside his book and paid attention to his son. I set aside half the donut to eat later. The government has set aside money especially to deal with this problem. Our trip is coming up fast. You're right. Let's set aside some time to plan tomorrow night. Settle for. Would you settle for a hamburger instead of a steak? There was no soda, so he settled for water. We had to settle for the smaller apartment because it was closer to my office. 
Sorry, we don't have any red caps. That's okay. I'll settle for a green one instead. So far, so good. How do you like the new job? So far, so good. How is your project going? So far, so good. How is your son doing in college? So far, so good. How's life with the new baby? So far, so good. Take over. I can take over if you are tired. A national bank took over the local bank last month. If you are tired from driving, I can take over for a while. I am tired of mowing the lawn. I'll take over this week so you can have a break. In the kitchen. What are you making? I'm trying to make bread. We are all supposed to bring something to the party on Saturday. I'll be too busy on Friday, so I'm making it in advance. So how is it going? So far, so good. I made the dough and set aside half of it to rise, but now I have to knead this half of the dough. That's a lot of work. If you're tired, I can take over for a while. I have some free time for an hour or two. It's a messy job. I don't mind. Let me try. This is hard work. Are you sure you don't want to settle for some bread from the bakery? No way. I only eat bread made from scratch. <music> Idioms in context. My husband and I just had our first baby. For the first three months, I was breastfeeding the baby. Then we decided we would do away with breastfeeding and give the baby formula and solid food. Part of the reason for this change was that I needed sleep. I had been feeding the baby when she woke up at night. That meant I was getting up two or three times each night on average. We knew the change to the new food would not come about easily, but we had to try. Even if it was hard at first, in the long run, it was for the best. My husband likes to eat all natural food, so he wanted the baby to eat homemade food. I told him that unless he was willing to set aside the time to make the food himself in advance, he would have to settle for regular baby food from the store. There was no way I was going to make baby food from scratch. After we had tried giving formula to our baby for a few nights, a friend of mine asked, "How is the new feeding schedule going?" So far, so good. I told her, "I'm getting more sleep now that my husband took over some of the feedings at night. But sometimes I have to push my husband out of bed because he is a heavy sleeper." Last night, when the baby started to cry, I woke my husband up and said, "She's hungry." He looked confused and asked, "Who?" Lesson twenty-nine. In class, target idioms. As to. I was given no explanation as to why my hair is turning blue. She was given no explanation as to why her electricity was cut off. We have information as to the location of the missing boy. What were you and that man talking about? He gave me some tips as to where I could find a good used car. By and large, by and large, the food is very good at that restaurant. By and large, the public transportation in New York City is very reliable. It was a good performance. By and large. How was business last year? By and large, it was successful. Due to, due to the amount of alcohol he drank, he couldn't drive home. Due to the strike, the subway is not running today. The game was canceled due to the storm. Why aren't you at the picnic? It was canceled due to high winds. Fall behind. She fell behind in school because she was sick for a few weeks. 
They fell behind schedule and could not meet the deadline. She fell behind at work because her computer crashed. How did your team do? They fell behind in the second half and lost the game. Lose track of. It's easy to lose track of time when you're reading a good book. I always lose track of how much I spend on clothes. He lost track of his dog in the crowded park. This vacation is so relaxing. Yes, I've lost track of the days. Make believe. She used to make believe she could fly. I used to make believe I could walk on water. She made believe she was sick so that her mother would not make her go to school. Why is your son wearing a pot on his head? He's making believe that he's a robot. On no account, on no account should you mix electricity and water. On no account should you open the door if you don't know who is there. On no account should you give your credit card number to strangers. I can't believe there was a worm in your hamburger. On no account am I going to eat at that place again. Originate from. He was sure that the email message originated from someone in the office. The legend originated from the Native American tribes in the Southwest. The letter originated from Paris. My grandparents were from Germany. My ancestors originated from Norway. Pull one's leg. Come on, you're pulling my leg. You're not a spy. You're pulling my leg. He told her he was French, but he was pulling her leg. Stop pulling my leg. I'm serious. There is a snake in my house. Throw up. He threw up at the party last night. If you drink too much, you will throw up. The baby threw up on her grandfather's suit. Did you see Bill and Monica kissing at the party last night? Yes, it made me want to throw up. In class, did you finish the essay we have to turn in today, May? No, I didn't write my paper due to this awesome website I found last night while I was surfing. While I was on the site chatting, I lost track of time. Then I looked at the clock, and it was one in the morning. What? I hope you're just pulling my leg. You know the teacher told us that on no account should we miss any essay deadline. She doesn't accept any late papers. Don't worry, I'm going to make believe I'm sick. Unless you throw up in class, I don't think she is going to believe you. Hey, that's a great idea. <music> Idioms in context. I hate to fly. But I recently had to take a plane to a conference. One reason I hate to fly is that I get airsick. Before this flight, I took some medicine so I wouldn't throw up on the plane. Another reason I hate to fly is that I don't like to talk to strangers. On this flight, I made believe I was asleep so the person next to me wouldn't bother me. By and large, the flight itself wasn't too bad when we were in the air, but there were always problems on the ground. For example, we had to stop in St. Louis and change planes, but the flight I had to change to was delayed. The flight I needed to catch originated from Washington D.C., but it fell behind schedule due to bad weather. I had to wait in the airport for two hours. Then, when we finally got to Los Angeles, the pilot had trouble finding the gate. The plane kept driving around. I knew that on no account should you get out of your seat while the plane is moving. So I started looking through one of the magazines on the plane. I came across an interesting article. Article, interesting article. So I lost track of time, but we must have been driving around for ten minutes at least. I asked a flight attendant for an explanation as to the delay. She said, "I think we're lost." I wasn't sure if she was serious, so I said, "You are pulling my leg." 
At that moment, the pilot came on the intercom and asked, "Does anyone know where Gate Twelve is?" Lesson thirty. Target idioms. Be well off. Mr. Sanchez is well off. They aren't very well off, but they're happy. He was well off until he lost all of his money in a bad investment. I heard that Carol's folks are well off. Yes, her mother is a fashion designer. For good. Our relationship is over for good. He plans to move to New York for good. They closed their store downtown for good. Good news! I quit smoking for good. Congratulations! Now, what about your gambling? Let alone. He can't even swim, let alone work as a lifeguard. I can barely afford this apartment, let alone a house. She won't do any typing, let alone organize the filing. Would you like to be on our baseball team? Me? Ha! I can barely throw a ball, let alone hit one. Look back on. He sometimes looks back on his childhood. There are many good memories I can look back on from high school. She doesn't like to look back on her life in Arizona. When you look back on your life. Do you have any regrets? Yeah, I wish I hadn't invested all that money in stocks. Lose one's head. In an argument, it's important not to lose your head. He lost his head when she told him she was leaving. In an emergency, it is important not to lose your head. Ted, that bear is coming right at us. Don't lose your head. Just pretend to be asleep. And it will go away. Make faces. He's always making faces at the girls. The baby laughed when I made faces at him. Don't make faces. Just eat your broccoli. I don't care if you don't like it. Why were you arrested? I made faces at the queen. Regardless of, he decided to wear his favorite outfit, regardless of what the others thought. She plans to go to Spain, regardless of the cost, regardless of what other people thought. He quit his job and joined the circus. Steve is a crazy guy. Yeah, he plays with crocodiles, regardless of the danger. Result in coming to work late again will result in him losing his job. The earthquake resulted in the deaths of thirty people. Smoking often results in health problems. Speeding could result in a traffic fine. I know, but we're late for the wedding. Stand up to. I just can't stand up to my father. You can't let them push you around like that. Stand up to them. She finally stood up to her mother and told her she was old enough to get married. I want to be a dancer, but my father says I have to join the army. I think you should stand up to him and tell him what you really want. Four. Here, I got you this. What for? She gave me five dollars. What for? I have to go back to the office. What for? Let's give Jimmy some money for his birthday. What for? He'll just waste it on video games. <laughs> What happened to you? That big guy over there hit me. What for? I'm not sure. Looking back on what happened, it doesn't make any sense. You must have done something to result in his hitting you. I was playing with some kid. I guess it was his son. How were you playing? We were just making faces at each other. Then I must have made a scary face because the kid started crying, but I didn't touch the kid, let alone hurt him. So the kid's father hit you? Yeah, I guess when he heard his son crying, he lost his head and attacked me. 
Let's go get some ice for your eye. It looks terrible. Idioms in context. I used to deliver the mail in a very rich neighborhood. When I look back on that time, I have to laugh. Most people in that neighborhood were very well off and had big houses, but they all tended to prefer small dogs. Those dogs were little, but they were also mean. In fact, I quit that job for good after one of those little dogs bit me. One thing I learned about dealing with dogs. Is that you have to stand up to them when they start barking at you? Don't make faces at them. If you show them your teeth, it will just result in making them angry. And as a rule, it's best not to move, let alone turn your back on them. Regardless of how much a dog barks, just stand there and wait for it to get bored. Don't lose your head and panic. They usually won't bite unless you do something aggressive. Once. A little dog was barking at me when one of the people from the neighborhood passed by on the other side of the street. He yelled, "Ask the dog if he wants a bath." I asked him, "What for?" The man yelled back, "If you ask him, he'll run away." So I tried it. I asked the dog, "Do you want a bath?" And it stopped barking, looked at me, and then ran away. I told the man across the street, "Wow." That dog must really hate baths," he said. "No, he loves them. He's running home now to get one."